Okay, this is the ready. first podcast I've ever done since I started like, actually really? getting notoriety. This is great. We're going to talk about it all. Very oh, personal. we are excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, I don't know go. if you know I opened this, so I just apologize in advance. Do your so thing. Do your okay. thing. Look, right, y'all got these tall ass chairs. My feet dangling. <laughs> and five, four, three, two. What up, y'all? Welcome to his thing. I'm Kevin Stane. She's that chick angel. Welcome to another podcast episode. Do that every time. We absolutely yeah, every time. Every we, it, it initially started from us trolling all the YouTubers are doing it, but now our, do our people don't let us do it. That is hilarious. Bangers, bangers, bangers. It's like when three I years see that in repeat, it's just me standing there like. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, wait a minute. Is this their prayer before yeah. they say it? <laughs> Ladies hilarious. and gentlemen, we are very excited. We have the People's I'm Champ, honored. Keith Lee. The reason I call him the People's Champ, mm. much like Tabitha Brown in 2020, mm. the entire diaspora and beyond oh, yeah. has fell in love with Keith Lee. Those are high okay. accolades. Oh, Shout out to I remember Tab, Tab blowing up, accolades. and I was high like, accolades. this woman has... She, she had disabled she was children. Everywhere. Oh. She was black mother. Everywhere. When I saw this she disabled white girl say, "I'm," I, uh, uh, she was like, "Have a good day." I said, "Now, Tay, now you, <laughs> you would have made, made it. Yeah, you so, made it. Small white threshold. children. <laughs> That's the threshold. That's yeah. the trap. That's the threshold. <laughs> no, well, Keith was That's like, amazing. "I'll get the old white man." That's what I knew too. That is Keith went and I listen. We've been following obviously for a while. You know, mm. I'd be up on stuff mm. when Keith when that when the we, we were gonna talk about all this. But I knew the people loved you. But when that lady had did what that lady did. I saw oh, black yeah, people yes, yes, all yes, up. Yes, now, I know yes, what they ain't going to do is mess yeah, with yeah, my yeah, Keith. Yeah, yeah. Keith don't bother nobody. Lisa. He sit there, he eat his food in his Paw Patrol. You know what I feel he like? He said 10 out of 10. I felt like the super smart smart kid in the back of the class to help everybody with their homework. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I did. They're I like, swear I did. They were like, you ain't going to mess with him. Hey. You can mess with anybody now, else come, in here. Cool, but you ain't man. Gonna mess. I love that. I loved it. I so we are going to talk to Keith about the Keith Lee story. I'm honored. Right? If you don't know Keith Lee, he has... 10, at this moment, mm-hmm. 10 million a little over 10 million followers on TikTok. Who, who, who's counting? Right? Yeah, who's counting? Right, 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 on right, right. TikTok, <laughs> right? Yes. right? Mm. Which, and I only say that because on TikTok people will see all your videos without following you. Yeah, Facts. But 10 million Facts. people Click the button. I clicked it. On Keith God Lee. is amazing. God is amazing. God is and amazing. I know mm-hmm. him for myself. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Uh, and he is mm-hmm. a humongous creator on TikTok, mm-hmm. mostly known for food reviews mm-hmm. and um being a loving father. Talk that talk, kid. Married to a talk black talk, woman. Kid. Yeah. Yes, Shout out to that because you know. Shout yes, out to very gladly. Hey, black girl. children. Very proud. Regular very proud. black. Very proud. Regular <laughs> black. <laughs> Regular <laughs> black. That's a fact. Say you that know, louder. Regular so... black. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so we'll start at the beginning, right? Uh, before Keith Lee was known as Keith Lee. Yes. The uh, yes. creator. There was Keith Lee the fighter. Let's mm-hmm. go all the way back to you from Detroit. I'm so honored. Look, look. I just want to start that. So, <laughs> So I, 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 like I said before, we on camera. This is the first podcast I've done since I've got the notori- notoriety. Mm. I've done podcasts as a fighter or as like an athlete, mm-hmm. but never to where I've been able to tell my story and actually yeah. tell like where I started and like. I've been watching you for years, so this is crazy. <laughs> I've been watching you for years. So. This yeah, is so this crazy because I was Let's we was talking about it. this on the pod, mm-hmm. and Angel was like, "Yeah, go and get Keith. He I probably did. knows you." I know, and I, was I like, surely did. Keith Lee going on to Mr. Beast, and the, the my stage dad like, called me after you said that, and my dad was like, "You know that dude you used to watch on YouTube all the time?" I said, "Which one?" He said, "The bald one." I said, "Oh yeah, you talking about Kev?" He said, "Yeah." He was like, "Yeah." He said, "You way too big to be on a podcast." <laughs> I was yes, like, "I'm is. calling. I'm calling Kev the same day." <laughs> I literally, I literally DM'd you the exact same day. And you popped up. It's crazy because as soon as he told me that, you popped up on my for you page with a video basically telling me, That's giving TikTok. me advice. Yeah, mm-hmm. TikTok. Was oh, like, TikTok. That TikTok. He popped listening. up and gave me advice. Yeah, crazy. Keep it was like literally up. like an hour. But I wouldn't even say it was like thirty minutes after oh, my dad said. Oh, you saw that said, clip? I saw the clip on TikTok on my for you page. Come on. That's wild. I, and I literally DM'd him right afterwards and was like, "Bro, I just saw this clip. My dad just told me to reach out to you." 
God is amazing. That's, make no mistake. Yeah, yeah, we know you love him. So Kevin Frecher, again, <laughs> listen yeah. to you me. Right, you right. Because you tried to say. I said, I, no, no, you going to talk was, to the Keith Lee. He was hyping me up like I was Obama or somebody. I mean, he you talking about He's way too big to be on. I said, ain't no way. He was like, he's with Mr. Beast. I said, and? And? You Kev on stage. You know what? Sometimes I forget. Same. Sometimes I I was telling you the same thing. Same, same, same. Even when you were speaking of accolades, I was like, I just eat food. Nah, right. I, don't, I was like, I don't know no, what you're talking about. You listen, you change your life. Listen. So it's let's God. go back before vessel. all that. Before all yes, that, before talk. all let's that. Talk. I didn't know you were from Detroit until your video from this week. You said Joy Road, and that's mm -hmm. even though I don't, I didn't live in Detroit. You I know Joy that? Road. <laughs> CP always talking about Joy Road. Road. Like people yes. from Detroit always mention Joy Road. Kishi. Shout out to CP. So take us back to Baby Keith. What was it like growing up in Detroit, Michigan? So I've had a very supportive lifestyle my entire life. I have both parents. Uh, my mom and dad, I have three siblings. Mm -hmm. It's me. I'm the middle. I have a younger brother named Cameron, an older brother named Kevin, and then a sister named Irma. Mm -hmm. uh, we are all born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. I was born in Southfield, which is like kind of a suburb outside of Michigan. Mm -hmm. Well, it used to be a suburb, but yeah. now it's like a extension of Detroit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like if you're not from there, you just say I'm from Detroit, basically. Yep. Okay. So I, I was raised in Southfield for four years. Um, and then my dad got laid off or he got fired and one of those things happened. Yeah. I was a kid, so I really know the extent. Right. But then we moved to Detroit and Detroit is like the inner city, like Detroit, Detroit. Yeah, moved on yeah. Seven Mile Evergreen, which is like the game, the right. part. is <laughs> it's, it's, it's deep. Uh, but I, I say I've always had a supportive uh, lifestyle because my parents have always been very strict on us. Mm. Uh, yeah, we lived in the hood, but I ain't living in the hood. I uh -huh. wasn't going outside. I wasn't playing. Mm. Uh, when I did, it was very, like, supervised. Mm -hmm. You in the house by 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to be with one of your brothers. Yeah. You never by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't really experience the... I didn't know how broke we was. Uh, like, I didn't experience that. I didn't understand that until I got older and I became an adult. And I was like, oh, I was broke. Yeah. <laughs> it was like one of those. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so I was born and raised in Detroit. We moved to Seven Mile Evergreen when I was about four or five. Uh, I went to school there. I went to a school named Emerson. No, let me back up. I went to a school named Kennedy, which is in Southfield. Mm -hmm. I got kicked out of school because I was a terrible kid. What? Were you? Terrible. What was you doing? I, was, what was I you saw doing? I got kicked out of six schools. But wow. the first school I got kicked out of. So I, I've always had a problem with authority. Mm -hmm. ah. I don't listen to authority well because I don't like people telling me what to do without telling me why I'm doing what you're telling me to do. That's okay. fair. Uh, yeah. I've always been big on communication. Mm -hmm. Even as a four-year-old, a six-year-old, I've always been huge on... I was that six-year-old that would ask you a thousand questions. Right. Like, why are you telling me to pick that up? Are why? you an Aquarius? I'm a Libra. A Libra. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, I don't know nothing about no... I don't know I'm why I even asked. Like, I know things about stuff. <laughs> Go ahead, Keith. Sorry. sorry. confident. You sound <laughs> confident. <laughs> What they be doing? <laughs> He's like a Libra. I don't even know what that is. Go ahead, baby. So, so I, always, I always had a big problem with authority. So mm. teachers would tell me to do things, and they wouldn't explain why I was doing them. Yeah. So it always came off immediately as disruptive or disrespectful. Mm. Uh, because, you know, when you tell an adult, explain why you're telling me what to do as a first grader or a second grader, you're like, it's this badass little kid. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get this badass little kid away from me. Right. That's kind of how it was. Yeah. Um, so I got kicked out of school at Kennedy because I got into a fight with a security guard. Was He was kind of like a um, part liaison. I mm -hmm. think that's what you call it. Liaison. Yeah. Yeah. Liaison. Yeah. liaison. Uh -huh. uh, he was basically telling me I couldn't go to uh, recess for some reason. I don't remember why, but mm -hmm. I do remember that I put my hands on him <laughs> and I immediately got kicked out of school. Okay. Um, you said so sixth grade? This was in a fourth grade he was a child this was in a fourth grade oh, i was wow. a i was a kid yeah yeah i was an adolescent you can't go outside well, yeah yeah it was yeah yeah it's me and you now buddy <laughs> we not in we like, buck yeah. in we ready to fight yeah uh, yeah i was very uh very set in my ways i yeah. i knew because i i'm sure i asked him why can't i go outside yeah. and he didn't tell me and i was like okay well i guess i'm going outside whether you want me to or not and i attempted to go outside he put his hands on me i put my hands on him and mind you, I want to paint the scene. I was 40 pounds. Clear name. Yeah, clear <laughs> yeah. name. I've always been a very small kid. Yeah. So I was smaller than the rest of the kids in my... And I think that's probably where it stems from, too, because I've always been a very small child. Yeah. Uh, so I've always thought that I had to 
show a dominance or show like a fit. I had a small person complex. Yeah, I always yeah, had yeah. to show like a dominance or like a that I was here basically. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure they he put his hands on no me. More. Yeah, exactly. And he kicked me out immediately. So I'm sure he put his hands on me. I put my hands back on him. I went to the principal office, got into it with the principal. My mom <laughs> called. My mom came down and she was like, "Oh, that's Keith being Keith again." Wait a so, second. Yeah, I was, Go to the I was bad, and bro. Get it too, yes, I'm, and that is not an exaggeration. That is not an exaggeration. Or me trying to sound tough I, because again i was small i wasn't gonna do nothing to nobody right. i was right. just all bark i was i was nobody i was all bark i wasn't gonna harm nobody i wasn't gonna actually harm physically harm nobody i just sounded like i would uh-huh. so uh so i got kicked out of there i went to a school named emerson emerson is on seven mile evergreen mm. the hood mm-hmm. i thought i was hood until i got to the hood <laughs> and then again i told you i've been very like structured yeah. i didn't realize that until i got around unstructured kids yeah and i was like oh this is different no uh-huh. i was like oh this is different i was like oh yeah i'm not one of y'all right i don't belong <laughs> i was like, I don't so, belong at all me. so i i tried to fit in and it didn't work i got kicked out within like the first two weeks of wow. being there immediately fully expelled expelled he went uh, so a I, revolving so, door <laughs> so with the uh, with the southfield school i got um expelled of all southfield schools i couldn't go back to a public southfield school wow. uh, so i went to detroit school and then I was there for like two weeks. Quick story. I got jumped. Uh, it was what, uh, field day. I was, yeah. was it the liaison? It was field day. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was field day. <clears throat> I've never told this story. I told So I, I used to want to be an Instagram comedian. So I told the story on Instagram back in like 2015. Okay. But you're the first person to get like this story. So, right. uh, so it was Exclusive. field day. Bow, 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 bow. And uh, I'm bad with sugar. I've always been very bad with sugar. I don't do well at all. That's why I don't eat sugar now. That's why I don't eat super sweets. Because mm. the second I eat it, I'm like a jittery kid. I can't sleep. I can't function. I can't talk right. I get bouncy and jittery. Mm. Uh, and I was like that as a kid. So I had a bunch of sugar this day. I'm talking about a bunch. Suckers, Jolly Ranchers, mm. anything you can think of. Uh, and we was outside, and it was two place capes. <clears throat> it was a elementary place cape, because this is a hood school. So all of the elementary and middle school together. Mm-hmm. You got one through eight. We all in the same. We got two separate buildings, but we all in the same building, basically. Yeah. Uh, so... We, I'm at, I'm in the fifth grade, so I'm at the little kids' place, place cape. Again, I'm hyped on sugar. I'm bouncing around. I like, I'm like, oh, I gotta pee. So I go to run in the school, not realizing. Again, I'm so hyped up, not realizing. I'm going into the middle school, and I get there. I get in the bathroom. I hear click clack, click clack, click clack. I'm like, what's that noise? What is, what's click clacking? <laughs> Bust the door open, and my, mind you, I'm already like almost like exposing myself at this point because yeah. I gotta pee real mm-hmm. bad. Yeah. Open the door. I'm fully exposed at this point. Like, <laughs> where are you about to go, right? Open the door. All I hear is click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. Walk in the door. is 10 kids way bigger than me, way older than me. Most of them didn't even go to the school. Most of them were like <laughs> the brothers of the people that were at the school. They in there gambling. I'm talking about gambling hard. It's money everywhere. Money, dice everywhere. Before I realized that it's this many kids there, I'm peeing. <laughs> Before I realize how many people is there and I'm not supposed to be doing what I'm doing, I'm fully peeing. Again, I don't do well with sugar, so I'm so jittery and so hyped up that I can't control it, right? So you just pissing on the floor. Every, no, uh, people, floor, <laughs> money, dice, oh everything involved. God. People had like open containers of waters and like beverages. I'm talking about everything. It was popcorn because, again, it's field day, so it's like popcorn and, and all kind of shit. So I'm fully peeing at this point. Uh, before I realize I met, made, made a mistake, I'm trying to apologize while I'm still peeing. So I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my bad, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the and kid is not trying to still fully, like, fully peeing. So nobody is trying to hear me. Nobody like, oh, this is a kid, he making a mistake. Everybody's just like, we oh, getting no. peed on. And he, again, most of these kids don't even go to school. So I'm sure it's like some 17-year-olds, some 16-year-olds, oh, some no. grown adults. So before I realize it, I'm running out of the bathroom, still fully exposed. <laughs> running out of the bathroom, I'm I'm done peeing at this point. <laughs> I didn't I didn't already finish the job. The tank. <laughs> the job is already the job has already been done at this point. Uh, so I'm, I I didn't even have time to like really talk to nobody about it or explain myself. I'm just running. So I'm running down the hallway. I get out the door, back to the playscape. 
by this point, I told you it's 11 people in the bathroom. These 11 people have turned it to 30 because they didn't got more people. Oh, oh, them no. people that got more people. And they're not explaining the story. They just saying he pissed on us. <laughs> and the evidence is everywhere. The evidence is on them. It's on the money. So they don't have to explain the story. They just say he pissed on us as I'm running. Oh, no. I turn around. And mind you, my, my house is maybe like a 10 minute walk. Right? Because I used to walk to school every morning. My house was a 10 minute walk and it was a big field because Michigan is all grass, basically. It's a big field that separates my school and my house. So I'm running down this field. At this point, I didn't pass a playscape. I didn't pass all the teachers, all the security guards. Well, we didn't have no security guards. We just had normal people who claimed to be security guards because right, right. it's a hood school. I didn't pass all of them. I'm running through the field and mind you, it was 30 people. I turn around. Now it's the whole school. Oh, everybody. No. And they screaming, they yelling, everybody like, get him. Get them oh, right now, no. and I'm just by myself. I'm just by myself, mind you. I'm like less than four feet tall. I'm sixty pounds. I'm terrified. I don't know what's going on. I'm terrified. I'm running down through this field, and it just feel like they multiplying. I just remember vividly. It was a girl in a tree, and she was like, "You about to die." And she was literally looking me in my eyes. It felt like it was slow motion. She was looking me in my eyes, and she was like, "You about to die." And I, and I told myself, I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm, not. I'm making it to the crib. <laughs> I was like, no matter what, I'm getting to the crib. Oh, so my God. So I get to the house. I'm crazy. banging on the door. My dad opened the door. He see me, and he see 60 people behind me. And he like, what the <laughs> fuck did you do? Mind you, I got a bad track record. So he don't immediately think I'm the victim. Right. He, he think I'm a, a assaulting like, somebody. Him, yeah, 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 yeah. Immediately, he immediately think the worst. He think I done broken somebody's house or I done did something. Oh, no. So before he defend me, he on their side. He like, I know you done fucked up. I don't know what you oh did, right. but they ain't all wrong. Right. Long story short, he he pulled a pistol. Your dad? Yes, okay, he did. Come on, come yes, on. He did. That's right, daddy. Got in the house, got in there safe, never went back to that school. Wow. They never went back to that school. So you, so you didn't really <laughs> get kicked out of the school. You just kind of chose not to go back. Yes. Okay. That's fair then. And then I got to the middle school. So all of the middle schools and elementary schools are attached. Because again, we in a hood. So I got to the middle school, which is Taft. And that's the school I got kicked out of. Man. Uh, you know, okay. So I don't know if this is a Michigan thing. But um, it's sugar and Kool-Aid. You put it in a bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shake it up mm -hmm. and you sell it for $5 a bag. Oh, wow. That's I used to do that. Yeah, that's I used to do that. And I had like 30 bags of it. <laughs> and mind you, I'm in the sixth grade now. So I had like 30 bags of it. Oh and my I'm, God. I'm thinking I'm King Tut. I'm walking <laughs> yeah. through the school. It's I'm Frank passing Wilson. it out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm passing it out. out. I'm getting high magic. fives with the $5 bill in my hand. I'm buying people lunch. And but yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think I'm him. <laughs> they end up finding it. They called the full SWAT team, damn near, uh, kicked me out, made me sit with handcuffs. God, and I'm oh, yelling at people. And sugar? They thought I had drugs. Yeah, and they, 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 like, they, they, like, this is a hood school. So they immediately <laughs> assumed the worst. They didn't think like, oh, he just selling Kool-Aid. As I'm trying to tell them, it's just Kool-Aid. But I think everybody with drugs will say it's just yeah, Kool-Aid. Yeah, yeah. Until you taste it or until you test it. So they tested it and they still kicked me out. Oh, this is just cherry. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's basically. <laughs> but Pure. after I put them through all of the, the hassle to do all of that, because I'm mind you, I'm not peaceful in these handcuffs. I'm not yeah. sitting there like crying or I'm yelling at everybody. Of course. I want to smoke with everybody. It's cool, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to smoke with everybody. Yeah. yeah, I'm threatening to sue. I'm in a situation. I don't know what suing is. <laughs> right. I'm cases threatening to sue. Everybody. I'm everybody. like, everybody getting cases. I'm putting cases on everybody. Everybody, everybody getting cases. Jake! Yeah, for real. <laughs> Jake! I told you it was just Kool-Aid! Jake! I was trying to, but by that point, they was like, you can't go to any more Detroit public schools. Just go, so I got go kicked away out from of here. Any more public. So I got kicked out of all the Detroit public schools, uh -huh. all Southfield public schools. I ended up going to a Southfield charter school, which is called Academy of Southfield. Please say you made it through. Uh, I, uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> he, did. he did not say yes. I, uh. So, so I got suspended a lot, but I did make it to the eighth grade, and then I got kicked out in eighth grade. You're doing better. Yeah, I made it. <laughs> I made it two better. years. The other schools, I made it like a semester, uh, two semesters. You know that LeBron James Ooh. commercial where he was running all the kids following him? <laughs> that That's, was keep I swear, kids on bikes I, and it stuff. was like a movie. I, I, I vividly remember. I think like I have like trauma from it. I vividly remember one, running through this field and being like, "Why is there so many people?" He's being chased by the three hundred this morning. <laughs> like, and I don't look, understand. and we in Detroit, so they taking their shirts off. They, oh they, and I'm talking about big men too. Like these, <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm convinced that they not in, in the same school because these are like. 
mind you, when you a kid, you think everybody's super tall. Yeah. So yeah. they, in my memory, they was like six feet something. Yeah, they, they probably were. was like five, five or five, <laughs> four, but they looked like they were six feet to me back then. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, it, that was definitely a trauma experience. But Man. by the time I got to middle school, I got to Academy of Southfield. And um, again, I got kicked out again. But this time was for stealing candy. It's sugar, sugar. Candy. It's sugar. It's, uh, it's me sugar. and sugar don't do well at all. He pissed at on people all. because of sugar. He yes. got kicked out because of sugar. Kool-Aid Absolutely. sugar. And then, and then I was selling sugar. I was eating sugar, and then I was stealing sugar. Keith. And all of those led to me getting kicked out they of the school. They call you no Keith more. Lucas. The... <laughs> <laughs> so but where did you actually it. graduate from? So I've never been to a graduation before. Really? Aww. Elementary, middle school, or high school. Never been to a graduation. They just wouldn't let you um, do it. So I got kicked out of eighth grade, uh, like I said, for stealing the candy. And they didn't let me graduate. They just was like, we're going to send you your, your diploma in the mail right. when you go to high school. So by the time I got to high school, I was a wee head, mm-hmm. smoking every day. I'm talking about bad, bad, mm-hmm. like every day. Um, my freshman year, I had a point six oh, GPA. Dang. Wow. Uh, point six. That's um, just saying. See, know. this is why I want to do this. This is exactly point why six. I want to come here and do this. Because a lot of people look at me like I'm like this angel or like this. Like, I've gotten this way because I believe in God and I trust the journey that I'm on. Mm. That's the only reason I'm the way I am is because I've been through the tribulations. I've been through the hard times. I've been through the journeys, but I learned from them. I, yeah. I've experienced it. Because I, I took... was assuming you were this calm no. person. This is, no. keep leave done pissed and punched. Yes, and now, I, I was, was thinking that pissed, was but I could see a little something underneath. Well, you were a fighter, too. So, yes. I mean, like a you know professional mm-hmm. fighter. How did you get into that? So, let, let's, let, well, you, I want to skip around. Let's go to, let's go to, we, oh, we yeah, still have freshman year. Freshman year. Yeah, we had freshman year. Point six. I'm so happy we're doing this. I'm so happy we're doing this. So, for the future, anybody that wants to see this story can just come straight to this podcast yes. and come straight to this interview. I love it. Um, but, yeah, so I had a point six in, in high school. Um, I joined the wrestling team because my older brother, Kevin, he wrestled through all through high school. So, mm-hmm. when I was in Academy of Southfield, I would go up to the wrestling team and I would go into, up to practice and pick them up. And my mom, we only had one car. So, mm-hmm. my mom would, like, drop us off and she would, like, be, like, an hour late or 30 minutes late. And that time was used for me to go to the wrestling team. Mm-hmm. And I would, like be at the high school running around and I was like seventh, eighth grade. I was like be running around. I would know the coaches. I would know everybody. Um, so when I got, we ended up going to the same school. So when I got there, it was already like mapped out. Like you going to wrestle. Like you don't really have a choice kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Um, so when my grades start to dwindle, my, this was, well, my, this was first semester. So wrestling season starts in November, mm-hmm. either October or November. We already had got first report cards by the end. Yeah. And that first report card was like a point six. Mm-hmm. So the wrestling coach was like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. My my brother graduated with a like a three point nine, went to oh, college, wow. had a scholarship. Yeah, very uh, he was like really, really smart. <laughs> um and my sister, on the other hand, she graduated with like a two something. Mm-hmm. So I always like aligned more with my sister, but I was already always in the shadow of my brother. Mm-hmm. So when I got there, I was immediately in the shadow, even though my sister and my brother went to the same high school. Um but Everybody knew me as Kevin's brother because, like I said, I always wanted to wrestle practice. I was acquainted with everybody. So everybody yeah. was like, oh, that's Kevin Lee's little brother. Mm-hmm. So when they found out my grades were so bad, my wrestling coach pulled me to the side and he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't want to wrestle. I want to play basketball because I played basketball as a kid. But my freshman year, I was 4'9", 4'10", and I was like 106 pounds. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, mm. And my wrestling coach literally embarrassed me in front of everybody. I'm happy he did it, though. But in the moment, I was like, what are you doing? So he took me in the middle of uh, lunch, and he was like, what are you doing? I just saw your grades. And I was like, I want to play basketball. I don't want to wrestle. And I tried to walk away from him. And he grabbed me by my shirt collar, and he took me into the gym where they were doing basketball tryouts. Um, and it was like PE. They were doing PE, but the basketball coach was there. And he was like, hey, I got somebody for you. And he threw me in the gym. And he was like, he wants to play basketball. And the coach looked me up and down, and he was like, why are you in this gym playing with me? And I was like, damn. <laughs> damn. Ego was crushed. Oh, oh. Ego was crushed. Damn. So immediately, again, I'm a kid with anger management issues. Uh, I'm very violent yeah. <laughs> at this point. Uh, very, really don't know how to control myself. And I just, ba- I'm basically like cussing at him. I'm like, bro, what do you mean? Mm. Like, I'm, I'm just as tall as anybody else on the team. And I looked at everybody else on the team. I was not just as tall <laughs> as anybody on the team <laughs> at all. <laughs> so it was justified. <laughs> so, uh, in anger, I went to the wrestling practice just to show them, like, all right, well, how about this? Since you want to embarrass me in front of everybody, I'm going to come to the wrestling practice and just beat the hell out of anybody who's in my weight class, which I did, <laughs> which I did. Because, again, I was a very anger-driven, but I was talented. I was yeah. a very anger-driven, talented kid. But, again, I've been doing it since I was in the seventh grade, yeah. and most of those kids started in the ninth grade. Um, so when I got there, it was more out of spite 
It was more out of uh, arrogance. It was more out of just like, now I'm approved to you. I can do it. And I don't even want to do it. I'm going right. to just do it because you told me I can't do something else. So I'm going to just do it just to shit on you, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I ended up doing it. Beating the hell out of the kid that was there. He he was a senior. He had nothing to do no. with this. Beating the hell out of the kid. <laughs> He's like, he was just going to be the hell out. Basically, <laughs> <at me> <laughs> basically, <laughs> end up going out. I, I, I <laughs> performed spectacularly, mm-hmm. um, and I fell in love with it. I fell mm. in love with it. It was one of those things that really, it honestly, it saved my life. It, it mm. saved me from going down that path because it was like. It was one of those. I'm getting choked up. My bad. No, <laughs> no, no, but it was it was we one of those things. That, we here. cry here. That's fire. We cry yeah. here. We uh-huh. feel them feelings. As soon as I said that sentence, it kind of like yeah. Uh, but, Kevin's uh, a big cryer. Go I mean, ahead. Just don't play God's feet <laughs> by yeah. Frank Ocean. It's over for me. <laughs> but yeah, so um, it was one of those things where I like fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand that I was in love with it until I got to like maybe sophomore year. So my freshman year, I did really well. Uh, I ended up going to counties, which is like big for a freshman. Mm. Uh, I ended up going to uh, um, regionals. And I did really well. So mm-hmm. uh, my grades were still terrible. They were still, like, piss poor. Mm-hmm. But going into my sophomore year, he was like, you got to get your grades up or you're not going to wrestle. So it was one of those things where I was like, well, I'm not going to wrestle. I quit. And mm. I was done. Even though, again, I had a spectacular freshman year. I did really well. I did m- more than my brother did. And at that point, that was, like, the the catalyst. That's yeah. where I was. That was, like, where I was trying to reach. Like, mm-hmm. as long as I beat him, yeah. I don't care about nobody else. As long right. as I do better than he did, that's all I care about. Um but going into my sophomore year, uh, I quit, and me and my parents' relationship, well, me and my dad specifically, our relationship was on the rocks bad. Mm. Um, I didn't listen well. He would tell me to do things, and I was like, kiss my ass, basically. Mm. Dang. Um, he would come and get me from, uh, before I quit, he would come get me from wrestling practice, and I would be up there lollygagging, playing, and he just got off an eight-hour shift, 10-hour shift. So he was like, mm. bro, get in the car. Right, it's right. 8 p.m. in the afternoon. You got homework to do. I wasn't doing the homework. Yeah. But you got homework to do. You mm. got stuff to do at home. You got to get in the car. And I would immediately, we'd just go back and forth. Mm. Like, immediately. I was like, I ain't getting in the car. I'm with my friends. You embarrassing me. Playing that card, basically. Yeah. Um, so, long story short, I ended up getting kicked out of my house. I ended up living with my god brother, whose name is Josh. Um, I. Great name. Well, as soon as you said Joshy, <laughs> that's why I was laughing when you said Joshy, because that's what I call him. Um, He's he's my god brother because he was my brother's best friend in high school. Mm. So my brother's four years older than me. So as soon as I came in high school, they both left. Mm-hmm. So mm. um, I've been knowing him since I was like eight or nine. Uh, but he was my brother's best friend. Yeah. So I basically got kicked out. He wrestled too. So I basically got kicked out. And I was like, Josh, I need somewhere to stay. And he was like, move in immediately. Like, he would mm-hmm. pick me up from practice. He would take me to practice. And when he found out I quit, he was like, you got to get your shit together. Mm. And I was like... Fuck you. <laughs> basically, basically. I always think it's going to be possible. It ain't different. there yet. He it don't, like, he said, it don't get positive. I'm in this house right now. No, 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 no. It don't get positive I, until, yeah. like, until I graduate. Like, okay. But all through high school, I was a terrible. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so. We keep giving you chance after chance. You know what? I will. No, It don't get there yet. It don't get there yet. Back to, like, you got to get your grades on the so I can wrestle. I'll just never wrestle again. I'm saying it to let you know how persistent I am. I got And how, like. How <laughs> firm I am and what I believe in, <laughs> mm. and I think that's why I am the way I am now. But yeah. it, it makes way more sense when I tell the backstory, and I love that I'm doing this because I've never done this before. Yeah. Um, so I'm just relishing in the moment. By the way, <laughs> oh, uh, get in it. But yes. yeah, so I like I, said, I I quit. He was like, "You got to get your grades up." This and third, I didn't listen to him. Um, and he was like, "You can stay with me, but under only circumstances that." Because he has a brother my age as well too. His mm. name is Jonah. So he's he like, "Only circumstance is that you and Jonah." wrestle at home together and I don't care if y'all actually wrestle in school as long as y'all wrestle with each other and like basically built like a camaraderie like a brotherhood yeah and I was like all right I can do that um that ended up turning to me really loving wrestling so mm-hmm. I ended up going back um short story so this Josh is gonna love this that I'm even telling this story <laughs> so I went back to to practice the first day I went back uh we have head gears head gears are like a thing that protects your ears from getting like that cauliflower Color, yeah <clears throat> so we had head gears and I had just bought a brand new headgear. It was like one of the ones. So it's like kind of like the Kobe's of basketball. Got it. Where you see like somebody with certain shoes on and you're like, oh, he can really play. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. It was a headgear and it was basically like a, um, I forgot the name of it, but it was like uh, Cliff, Cliff King. Cliff King headgear and it was super nice. It was the colors of my school. It was blue and uh, gray. So I was styling everybody. He had a chin cup. Mm. I was like legit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I had just bought that and. Mind you, I first day back in practice, my coach is like, why are you here, basically? Mm-hmm. But my brothers are so close to my coach that he was like, please let him back on the team. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I come in super arrogant, super cocky. Brand new headgear, brand new shoes. I was one of them. I was a brand new shoes, <laughs> brand new everything. Yeah, drip for sale? Yeah, for <laughs> real. <laughs> and uh, so I, I walk in and I'm like super arrogant. I'm like chest up in the air, chin up in the air. And my coach is basically like, get this asshole out of here. And I'm not listening to nobody. I take my headgear in the, off in the middle of the practice, which is a no-no. You're not supposed to ever take your headgear off. You're not ever supposed to put hands on your hips or hands on your knees. Basically, it shows weakness to your opponent when you're wrestling. It. So it, it shows emotion. And one of the things in wrestling is you never want to show your opponent that you're either getting tired, getting frustrated, because they'll use that to their advantage. Um, so I did that in practice. Again, I'm not listening to nobody. He immediately grabs, my coach immediately grabs my headgear, and he throws it on the opposite side of the gym. And he was like, you can't touch that anymore. That's mine now. And I was like, who? What headgear is yours? I was like, that's my headgear. I just got that. What are you talking about? Right. And he was like, you can't have that. It's mine since you want to take it off. And he was like, the only way that you can stay on this team is if you practice without it. And in wrestling, like I said, cauliflower ear, you're not supposed to ever practice with it. I was like, not even that. I'm, I'm making an excuse now. I wanted my goddamn headgear. <laughs> right. So, so right. I was like, oh, I guess I'm not practicing then. Right. I was like, I quit again. I was like, I guess, I guess, day. first day. I was like, I'm gone. Take my head gear. I'm gone. I'm gone. I, gra- I literally walked off the mat, grabbed my headgear, walked. So we had stairs that lit up to the restaurant room. Walked up to the stairs, um, <laughs> and both of my brothers were there. Like, so Josh and Kevin were both there because they were the ones that convinced him to get me back on the team. <laughs> so they both like coaches at this point. They they in college. They both in college wrestling. <laughs> so they both like are like high standing individuals in the school. Basically, <laughs> um, I go upstairs and I'm like. I'm going home right now. And my brother's like, bro, we practicing. We not leaving. The only way you leaving is if you leave on your own. I didn't have no car. I'm walking. <laughs> so nobody thought I was going to walk. I lived I on Seven Mile Evergreen. <laughs> I went to school in Southfield. Anybody who's not from, South, uh, from Michigan. So Seven Mile Evergreen is on Seven Mile, and Southfield is on Ten Mile. Okay. Miles. Far. Oh, three oh, miles. Literally. It says three miles, but it's really like a five, six-mile drive. Oh my oh, God! Okay. Uh, okay. Wrestling practice in, is in winter. Okay. Uh huh. No, you did. In Michigan. In Michigan. In Michigan. Michigan weather. In Michigan, it was storming, so it was. I would say it was ten degrees. Ten degrees in a blizzard. You talking about persistent? Ten degrees in a blizzard. Jeez. This is the story of saying I walk in the snow uphill both ways. But Literally. You right. Six miles, and I'm I'm guesstimating six miles. I feel like it was way longer than that. Oh, it took, oh it probably my felt God! Like it was way longer than that. Nights. So nobody thought I was gonna do that. Nobody, like, I literally was packing my stuff up, and everybody was still practicing. And they was like, where are you going? I was like, I'm going home. This was in 2014, so we didn't have no Ubers, Lyfts, or nothing. I didn't even have a phone. I think I had, like, one of those black and white uh, Metro phones. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have no phone. So they was like, I know you're not going nowhere. What are you talking about? Grab my bag. I saw my brother, and I'm like, hey, you going to give me a ride? He was like, no. I said, bet. Walked out the door, got to marching. I have on shorts. Oh, my. I have on shorts. I have on moccasins. Moccasins are those like furry slipper things. Yeah. Yeah. But they're, from leather, they're leather on the with outside. With the leather on the outside, with a pleather Le- on the yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah. Fur on the inside, but they were from Payless. So they were like those were hot paper too. thin. They were, <laughs> oh, bro, man. everybody had I'm a pair. I had some moccasins. Everybody had a pair. <laughs> but they were paper thin. I got shorts on. Uh, I think I had like a thin t shirt, like thin, like a uh, wrestling t shirt, like oh, the one they give you. No. I'm mobbing it. I'm talking about walking with an attitude. I'm like anybody. I want somebody to mess with me. <laughs> I'm ready. ready to keep to, you I'm, really well. bro. I'm steaming. Like you can see the steam coming off my head. I'm oh still sweating. God. Cause mind you, I was just practicing. I'm still sweating. I, I got a dollar and twenty five cents in my pocket. I go. I'm walking. I'm like getting exhausted. <laughs> I get. I get like. I get halfway there and I'm exhausted. Now it's cold, freezing. Yeah. It was freezing. Cause I'm talking. I couldn't feel anything. Feet it was a gas station. Cold. Everything, bro. I'm talking I'm numb. It was a gas station. I'm walking past. I got this dollar in my pocket. I grabbed two. Uh, what are, what are they called? Uh, lemon heads. Yeah. Two lemon again. Sugar. Sugar. Oh I man. I grabbed two lemon head packets. <laughs> right. Get these little croissants. No, I grabbed two lemon them. head oh, packets, no. and I grabbed a bag of funyuns. I'll never forget it. I grabbed a bag of funyuns, <laughs> and I'm walking down. Set. I'm walking down eight mile, and I'm on eight mile. I'm on eight mile. The hood. Mm. I'm in a hood. And I'm shaking these fucking lemon heads. <laughs> and I'm like, I want somebody to walk up. Yeah, I dare, I dare somebody. And people just driving past, like, who is who the fuck is he? What is he doing? <laughs> Long story short, I'm hyped up. So at this point, I got the sugar. So I'm damn near running home. I get to the house. I it took me four hours, oh maybe. Four or five hours in the freezing cold. 
Uh, I get to the house. We have a space heater, right? <laughs> practice, <laughs> practice, practice, really practice. Really this is over. He really walked oh, the whole way. Go. On. I'm talking about to the crib. Look, so we got a space heater, right? It's like an old school. You plug in the wall, and it's exposed. You're not supposed to touch it. Yeah. I laid. I put a uh, like a towel down. I laid on it and went to sleep. <laughs> Because I was so exhausted. My brothers got home. Again, it's the sugar that's allowing me not to feel this pain and the fact that it's freezing cold. Because if I didn't have a, a sugar, is like crack to me. Mm. So, like, the sugar allowed me to walk home and not feel how cold I was and allowed me to lay on this heater and oh, not feel how cold I, I, I was. I don't know about these mm. croissants anymore, man. man. That's why I'm, I'm, a, I'm way better with sugar now, but as a kid, I was terrible. I, know, I, had, I, had, I, no I, <laughs> I had no regulating center. I had no regulating center. But so I lay on this <laughs> heater and I'm knocked out. My brothers come home like two hours later and they like, he really fucking walked home. He really did it. I'm dead there like hypothermic. And they like, he really walked home. Oh they pulled me off the heater and I'm like burnt from like here to my feet. I'm oh completely burnt to the side. And uh, my parents, they tried to explain to my parents what happened. And my parents like, bro, he didn't fucking walk home. You're all a liar. And I just go, up, I go up in my room, close the door. I don't explain shit to nobody. I'm burnt up. I'm freezing still. Oh my <laughs> I'm sick. I got sick for like a week. Uh, <laughs> long story short, I end up going back to uh, practice because I apologized because I wanted to be on the team. Um, I got kicked off again, but I apologized, and we were we were semi cool for a little bit, but then I got kicked off again. And that time, the second time I got kicked off was a turning point in my life. It was like, okay, what you about to do? Right. Oh, like okay. people were starting to quit on me. <laughs> okay. People were, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, look, so <laughs> at this point, everybody was starting to quit on me. My mm. brother had just went to college. He wasn't talking to me no more mm. because he like I didn't see what you can do. Yeah. Like I I'm trying to do something positive. I can see what you I see what you do. Yeah. You gonna ruin everything for me. He was at uh, Grand Valley State, which is a really big school in, mm -hmm. in Michigan, and he was like, I see that you are very detrimental, so I have to separate myself. Mm. And I didn't know how to take that. Yeah. I, I, it was really hard for me to take that. Um, my parents were basically like accepting that I was just a fuck up, mm. uh, and I hated that. Like I, I hated that That's feeling so because, sad. again. Kevin in school, he doing amazing. He on the wrestling team. Uh, and I just kept putting myself in his shadow. Or everybody around me was putting, my, yeah. putting me in the shadow. Yeah. So I was like, this is the time where I really start getting my shit together. But then that's when my life start. Life was showing me like, okay, you say you want to get your shit together. But now we about to put you to, through the hardest thing you've ever been through and see if you can really take it. Yeah. My dad went to jail. Um, long story short, some kids was messing with us. They stole a bike. My dad saw that they stole the bike. And... We went down there and all mayhem broke loose. Yeah. Mm. Mayhem broke loose. Guns got involved. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad a thug. Well, he retired thug, but <laughs> yeah, he don't play about his family. He yeah, don't play yeah, about yeah. his family at mm -hmm. all. Uh, guns got involved and all of that. We ended up getting evicted right after my dad went to jail because he was the one paying the bills. Yeah. Um, we got evicted. We ended up staying in my um, my mom's best friend's old house. She had a house that she like had just. We thought she bought it, but it was really just like empty basically it was an mm -hmm. abandoned house so it was me my mom and my younger brother we we're staying in this abandoned house um my dad's in prison or he's in jail at this time and then my brother's in college so i'm like at this point i wasn't really spiritual i didn't believe in anything mm -hmm. because i'm like there's no way you can tell me that something is real or something's gonna help me when i'm in the worst position i've ever been in and i'm trying to do right yeah. and i was like while i was doing wrong we were living in a nice house. Mm -hmm. My brother was still talking to me. My dad was still there. I was like, I was doing everything wrong, but things were still going right. Mm -hmm. uh, the second I tried to do right, everything went out the window. Yeah. Um, yeah. We were eating checkers. Uh, you know what checkers yeah. are, right? Mm -hmm. like they rallies. had a, a popcorn box. Mm. They had a popcorn box for $1.99. And my mama would buy one popcorn box for everybody for the whole day. That's all we would eat. Oh, wow. And again, I'm still in the 10th grade, so I still got to go to school. I'm still going to practice. Uh, I'm getting my grades better. Um, I'm actually focusing. So that happened all through 10th grade. Basically, the dude who was supposed to testify never ended up showing up. So my dad got off. Oh, okay. So he got back. Um, we ended up moving into a nicer house, but it was on Georgia Evergreen, which is the hood. Uh, we ended up moving there, and I really, like, turned my shit together. Like, I, I stopped smoking. Um, I stopped hanging out with like the people I was hanging out with yep. and I really started focusing. The first year I started focusing, I met this guy named Mike Confetti. I'll never forget him. He is a wrestling coach, but he came from a different school. He came from Troy, which is like a white school. Mm -hmm. So Michigan is very separated. Yeah. Michigan is, uh, I went to a school with 98% black people. Wow. We had two white kids and they both hung out with each other. 
<laughs> no exaggeration. Like, no exaggeration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no exaggeration. I thought you weren't coming to school today. No exaggeration. Uh, <laughs> so he came from a school where it was all white kids. Yeah. And in Michigan, Michigan is a very high wrestling school. So we were known as the black school. The black school don't go nowhere. They don't go to states. They don't go to regionals. We never had anybody make it to st- We had two people make the states before me, and it was in, like, the 1990s. Dang. So before that. In the 1990s, like, it was old, really <laughs> hurt. The, 19, the like, 19th like, century. Like, back in the 1990s. The 1900s. I was, like, when I was in school. <laughs> <laughs> I was in high school. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, Keep going, Keith. It's fine. Yeah, all the way back in the 1990s. Some of us were already in high school in the 1990s. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, right. So, so it wasn't known for kids from my school to go to states. Yeah. Um, but he came in, he changed a complete culture. He saw me and he saw my friend Davion and he was like, I'm taking you all to states. That's the first thing he said when he saw us. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, who you taking who to states? Mm-hmm. We ain't going to the states with them white folks. I was like, it, it's like some old slave boy. I'm like, I, ain't right. gonna, I can't compete with them white boys. Right. Yeah. But he believed in us. He believed in us. He took us under his wing. Uh, we ended up going to Virginia Beach was like a wrestling camp during the summer. And my entire life changed. I saw things I never saw before. Mm-hmm. I was hanging out with people I never thought I would hang out yeah. with. Um, and I just, I was like, oh, I can do this. Yep. Mm-hmm. So my senior year, I ended up getting a, I had a 3.6. Come on, Keith. You better go. Come I had on, a 3. Keith. 6. You had three you holes to that point. Huh? Three fools to that point. Three fools to that point. That's eight. Man. So I had a 3.6. Um, I went to States. Uh, cause again, he believed in me. I started believing in me. Yeah. I was like, I can, this is something that I can do. Yeah. Um, I ended up going to States and again, my life was, I was like, we was at the Palace of Auburn Hills, which is basically like the T-Mobile arena. Malice Palace. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The Palace is yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Palace is huge. And I was on the floor, on yeah. the floor. We was in a parade. I'm looking at my parents in the stage, looking at my brother in the stage. I mean, in a sta- uh, stadium, like the, uh, what'd you call it? The stands. stands, stands, the stands. I yep. say stage, my dumb ass. But yeah, yeah, there's in the stands, uh, and I just was like, oh, I can actually be somebody. Yeah. Uh, for the mm. first time in my life, that's I, I, I God damn, I'm getting choked up. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, for the first time in my life, I was like, oh, I can actually be worthy of something yeah. because yeah. up to that point, I never thought that that was like in a reality. Yeah. Um. So I went to states. I was 17. Um. Right after that, I tried to commit suicide. Oh. Yeah. Uh, God damn it. I'm getting choked up. It's okay. <laughs> feel them feelings. Uh, uh, so, yeah. So, um, me and my dad, our relationship was still rocky. And it was one of those things where I was like, I've made it. I'm doing everything that you've always wanted me to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm doing well in school. Um, I'm not smoking no more. I'm not hanging out with the people you didn't want me to hang out with. I went to States. I was like, oh, I didn't made it in life. Yeah. Uh, but he still saw me as like the fuck up Keith. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I know you're doing well now, but what happens when you're not doing well, mm-hmm. basically? Um, so we ended up getting into it real bad one day. Uh, I went in the backyard. I told the story on, on TikTok, but I never we went in, in detail. Yeah. Um, I won't go full detail. But I went in the backyard and I had a bunch of neckties, old neckties that he had like a collection of. Um, and I tied him up. He had like a, a patio he had built that was attached to the garage. It was like two wood planks that went up and it was a wood plank that went across. Uh, I grabbed the cooler. I jumped on top of the cooler, tied the ties up, tied it around my neck and I jumped off. Mm. Um, he walked outside and he thought I was playing, but at this point I was completely losing oxygen. I was like blacking mm. out. Um, he grabbed me off of the cooler and he was still mad at me cause he thought I was playing. Oh he thought I was God. doing it for attention, but if it wasn't for him walking out and pushing a cooler back under my feet, I wouldn't be here today. Wow. Um, yeah, so he took me off off the off the ties, and he started talking to me, and it started to hit him when he saw my eyes, because my eyes were red. Mm. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, like, it was I, it was there at yeah, that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he just was basically like telling me he loved me, he appreciated me. Um, I never heard him say those things. Uh, mm. God damn it. I uh, listen, I'm getting emotional, yeah, too, Yeah, God damn it, my bad. Jesus. Uh, I never heard him say those things because I've always, like I said, been the fuck up. Yeah. But as an adult, I understand it was because I was a fuck up. It wasn't because he didn't love me or he didn't support me. Um, he was just so tired of seeing me um, ruin my life for no reason, basically. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we had a talk that night and I just was like, I don't want to be here. I was like, I, I was broken at that point because uh, mm-hmm. I didn't see, I didn't have any scholarships, no offers, no nothing. Um, and... I ended up, like, going back in the house and sat in my room. I had, like, this real, like, small, dark room. It was always dark. I was a depressed kid. It was always dark. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up sitting in there, and basically we just talked one night, and um, 
I just was like, okay, well, let me try. Let me try one more time. Yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. I, I did everything right and wasn't nothing working. You still not believing in me, but let me just try. So um, I ended up going to school and I had a scholarship. I ended up, well, I ended up going back to high school and they gave me a scholarship that same, like the next day after this all happened. Uh, God makes no mistakes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I went and it was for a half ride. I thought it was for a full ride, but I ended up finding out it was for a half ride. Um, so they was like, you can go to Indiana Tech for a wrestling scholarship. And I was like, oh, again, I'm making it. It was one of those where it's like, I've always looked at my life as a movie. Yeah. So it, everything goes and like pursuit of happiness is how I always yeah, compare yeah. it to. So it always goes like, you remember when he first got into the um, shelter mm-hmm. and it kind of looked like everything was going well. Yep. Yeah. And then the IRS came and took everything out of his bank account yep. and he was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then he ended up in the subway again. Yep. Yep. That's kind of like how my life kept going. Um, so I, like I said, I got the scholarship. My parents came to me and my mom was like, so back backtrack. My brother is already a professional fighter at this point. Mm. Um, he's doing extremely well. He got into the UFC at, he was 10 and 0. He got into the UFC and the UFC is big money. Is real big money back then. Yeah. I think the opening contract is like ten thousand and ten thousand. Um, so we ain't never seen no money like that. Right, right. <laughs> uh, we ain't never seen no money like that. So right. he had left college specifically just to fight. So he was living in a gym, um, and he was just fighting out of the gym, and then ended up getting to the UFC. And he called my parents, was like, "Hey, I'm in the UFC now. I got some money. I'm going to Las Vegas. I'm going to train." Um, and he was like, "After I see, after I map it out and see, I want y'all to come down." I didn't believe none of that. Right. Again, right. me and my brother not talking at this point. So mm-hmm. he communicated through my parents. Yeah. And I'm like, Kevin about to move us to Vegas. That don't even sound logical. People right. don't even live in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was like, don't like live in Vegas. <laughs> There's a strip and people <laughs> visit yeah, it. Yeah, for real. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So uh, and yeah, I'm an inner city kid in Detroit. I've only been to Virginia Beach, and that's the only place I've ever traveled outside mm. of Detroit. Wow. Um, only place I've ever been to. So, I can't believe it. And I'm like, I'm flabbergasted. I'm like, we ain't moving to fucking Detroit. So yeah. this is April 1st of 2014. I mean, no, yeah, April 1st of 2014. And um, what, what's that? Two months before graduating? Mm-hmm, Two months, three months? Mm-hmm. Uh, and smack dad in the middle of my senior year. Yeah. My parents literally was like, you said you want to go to Vegas. We going to Vegas tonight. And I tonight? was like, who going tonight? <laughs> I said, who going tonight? <laughs> so, <laughs> so they literally packed it. We had a Nissan Altima, 2012 Nissan Altima. They drove that thing to Vegas. From, we packed it up. From Michigan? From Michigan. Come we on, packed Altima. it up with everything we could possibly fit in it. Uh, and we left everything else in the house. Oh, uh, wow. Left everything. Just packed all we had. Uh, everybody had like three bags to their names. Um, wow. We packed it up. My mom took me by the school that I was going to. And she... Um, told my teacher, like, hey, he's not going to be going here no more. And again, it's April 1st. So Dang. this is April Fool's Day. So nobody believes me. Oh I'm going gosh. to class and I'm like picking up all my books from all my classes. And I'm, all my friends is like, where you going? I was like, I'm going to Vegas. They're like, all right, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> like, right, right. Ain't nobody about to play with you on this April right. Fool's Day. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I grabbed all my stuff. We got in the car and we drove to Vegas. Um, and I posted on my Snapchat like two days later because it takes like two days to get there. Yeah. Uh, posted on my Snapchat two days later that I'm in Vegas and everybody was like, "Are you for real?" <laughs> <laughs> really? And they were like, this "Yeah, is, this April third, the, the day gone, over, bro." The, yeah, yeah. It's like the over, it's man. like the fourth at this point. And uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 he's gone. <laughs> it's a couple days to get there. We ain't seen he's him. Gone. Yeah, it took like two, two. I say two and a half days driving yeah. that, and the Nissan Altima it made it. It made it. Hey, did you say? Wait a minute. Did you say this was 2014? 2014. Yeah. Don't think about it too much, Angel. Hey, no. Don't do it, Angel. I, I, I don't do no want to. Kev, yeah, we're at we're Josh. at we're at all day. Josh. <laughs> yeah, I graduated in 2014. <laughs> uh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I told you I just turned 26. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but so, right. but so I got. He said, to... <laughs> ain't nobody went to state since the 1990s. <laughs> I was like, huh? In the late 1900s. It made me want to pull this thing up off my head. I was about to print this right up off of my head. Ah! Okay. Remember in high school, I had children. You? I had children. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. This is so good. Oh, this my so God. Good. I was pregnant. I tried to so ventilate it right now. <laughs> He was but walking yeah, so across the stage, he, and I was I was changing diapers. Was Actually, there was out of diapers. I was like, wait a minute. He said 2014. It ain't even been a decade since yeah, this happened. Uh-uh. No, so so I get to Vegas. Uh, my brother got my parents. So it's my my sister. She always had godparents. Mm-hmm. So she always lived with her godparents. Our godparents were pre- pretty wealthy. Yeah. Uh, so she always lived in Michigan, or she lived in Chicago. Uh, she's 11 years older than me. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all age. The ages mm-hmm. that we like. No, so <laughs> she was always she was in Chicago the whole time. Got it. Um. So we get to Vegas and it's a 
two bedroom apartment. And it's in Henderson. Henderson is like kind of like the yep. suburbs. Yep. Uh, so it's a very, I'm shell shocked. I don't know right. what's going on. Right, right. They, my mom came to me the next day and it's like April 5th. She came to me and she was like, do you want to finish school out here? And I was like, let me go to the school first and mm -hmm. see. Because again, I hated school. So yeah, I was like, yeah. if I don't have to, I won't. Right. But I was like, let me go to the school. I go to an all white school. I'm looking around. I'm like, oh, I ain't going here. Right. And she was like, you can go here just to finish uh, uh, do prom and go graduation. I said, no. <laughs> You're like, mm -mm. I don't need no prom here. I said, no, uh-uh. Because <laughs> uh -uh. in my mind, I'm already in college. Because mind you, I got, like I said, I got the half ride to Indiana. So yeah. I'm already in college. Yeah. Yeah. And in my head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, no, I'm done with school. I was like, I'm done with high school. Them, that's back. for kids. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm done with that. I ain't doing that. A grown man with a scholarship. Yeah, 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 I ain't doing that. We off that now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I didn't go to school. Uh, I had to finish school online. So I walk up to a library and I would do all my classes online. And then I would uh, and then I get my uh, graduation certificate through the mail. Wow. Okay. So uh, I ended up getting two jobs during the summer because from April to August is how long I was there at first. Um, I ended up working at Jimmy John's and I worked at Sweet Tomatoes, which is like a soup kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Sweet Tomatoes was the worst job I've ever had in my life. And if you are listening to this, y'all need to <laughs> switch something. <laughs> Y'all need to change zero, something. Zero out of ten. It's that fun. <laughs> Not even that. Not even that. <laughs> like, Not even that. You ain't on the scale. It was terrible. Mm. Uh, the first day, they had me picking up soup with my hand out of a boiling pot of what? water. Huh? For what purpose? Uh, so, what? so Sweet Tomatoes was a soup kitchen, and it was a vegetarian soup kitchen. So all they had was soup, breads, and salads, right? Mm. So like I don't know if you notice about <laughs> buffet. It's like a buffet. Yeah. I don't know if you notice about buffets. They don't throw anything away. Or maybe that's just sweet sweet tomato. Oh, wow. Sweet tomatoes didn't throw nothing oh, away God. at all. Soup so that's what I yeah, basically that's yeah. exactly what it was. So I was working in the in the kitchen. Uh, I thought that was a good job. I'm like, oh, I ain't got to be. In, I, I've always had anxiety, yeah. so I was like, I ain't got to be in front of people and talking to nobody. And man, they had me working with some man named Jose. <laughs> Jose had been there for 12 years. <laughs> Jose stuck his hand in a bo boiling <laughs> pot of soup water. So they had boiling water, and as soon as the, the shift was done, they would take the soup off of the line, put it in a bag, seal the bag, throw it in the boiling water, take it out the boiling water, put it back in the thing when the line was yeah. done, be ready to uh, eat again or whatever. Oh. And <laughs> I'm in awe. I'm, I'm, this is no exaggeration. During like would it be like a, a slow down period or like the soup getting a little low, he would take it out. He would get one of the bag out the walk in refrigerator, throw it in the boiling water, take it out the boiling water, put it back on the line, and you would just eat it and it would be like week old soup. So the first, it's like a soup deep fryer. They yes, just dump basically them. they just dump it. They just dump the soup. And this is congealed soup. It's like congealed and like so so the first day he goes and he grabbed the soup out of the pot. I'm talking about no gloves, no nothing. He's been there for 12 years, so his fingers been calloused up. He didn't got used to that. Nothing. Can't feel nothing. And I'm like, oh, it can't be that hot, right? <laughs> it can't possibly be that hot. <laughs> it can't be. You just put your hand in there. You just put your hand in there, so I know it's not that hot. I put my <laughs> finger in there and was like, oh, I quit. I was like, oh, I'm done. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's not for me. I was like, this is not for me. I, I kid you not. I finished that shift and I didn't touch another bag of soup that whole shift. I was telling them like I'm not doing that. And if you want to fire me, that's cool, but I'm not doing that. I'm not that. putting my hands <laughs> yeah, in the hot I ain't soup. Doing that. <laughs> I'm uh, not doing it. Everybody was looking at me like I was crazy. They right. was like, You gonna talk to the boss like that? You gonna tell him no? And I was like, I'm not putting my hand in the soup. Little do y'all so, know I've been doing this since fourth grade. I'm a little do, little do you know I'm ready to fight this. already. Like I'm already in that mindset. I put my finger in there and I was ready to fight. <laughs> Oh, it was over with. <laughs> so wait a minute, it was his hand was going in the water, not the soup. No, both. He was so the 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 soup was in a bag. So he was grabbing the soup with both hands. <laughs> and mind you, this is on a platform. So he's reaching like this and dipping his fingers in it and just pulling it out and like shaking it like that. So he had his hands on it for a good second. It wasn't like one of those like you know how your your mama is she black? She just put her hand in the grease. Yeah. She just pull something out and throw it real fast. Yeah. It wasn't that. He like submerged. He, he like submerged. He, he dropped in and, and grabbed it and shook it. He was shaking it, so he holding his hot plastic bag, and I'm like, "Oh, it can't be that bad. It can't be that bad." <laughs> he, don't, he don't feel nothing on those hands nothing. to this day. Not a to single bit. Not a single bit. So yeah, so I finished the shift. I never show back up. <laughs> I didn't go back again. I was only there again. for like a week. <laughs> Did you even get your check? No, no, no. They, they didn't have a check to give me. I was only there for like because the first 
four days was training. <laughs> it's probation. Oh, right. Yeah. The first four days was training. That was my first live oh, day. Oh, that was your first actual yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. So I was there for a this week, but the, the week was like training. I was gone. <laughs> oh, I told you, I don't play when it when I set boundaries. I, it's a boundary set. <laughs> I was not playing. <laughs> I was not playing one bit. So I never showed back up. Uh, I ended up working at Jimmy John's. And Jimmy John's was a great job. I loved it. It was uh, super fast paced. Yeah. And if you've never been to Jimmy John's, they make sandwiches in 20 seconds. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's not delivered. a joke. Yeah. And they make and it's not a joke. The brand is fresh. You too. have to do a test to get in. Like it's like college. They don't to, make to they see don't, if you can make sandwich fast. Yes, they don't make so, the bread in twenty, 20 minutes. Okay. No, no, I'm saying no, no. they make fresh bread. Oh, there. they make fresh say, bread every morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah they make not, fresh not bread. Not like every Subway, day. right? It's I like, like the they actually late chicken. No, they may actually make the bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They make the bread in there. But sometimes they had like where I was at, they had bread like sticks. Big Jersey They had like frozen sticks that they would just throw in the oven. Got you. Um, but. Yeah, you had to like do a full test. So I'm thinking, I like, I'm legit. I didn't pass the test. I'm like top of my class. <laughs> I'm extremely smart. I'm like, oh, I didn't graduated get it. again. You, you got to memorize the whole menu. <laughs> so you got to memorize the whole menu, and you got to memorize it, and you got to know how to say it backwards in order because it's real fast. So the way they they, they do it <laughs> is while you're ordering, the person that's online is already listening to your order. And they already making an order as you ordering it. Dang. So if you say a 12 with tomatoes, by the time you say 12, I'm already busting the bread open and getting the stuff for the 12. And then you say tomatoes, I'm already grabbing tomatoes. So by the wow. time you pay your money, my sandwich is done. So the same time that wow. people would, would hand the money, I'm handing you the sandwich. I think and it's that fresh. was just y'all's Jimmy John. The rest and I'm talking about we was moving. Yeah. That was right <laughs> thing at the beginning. It's I'm fast. talking about sweating. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> palm sweaty. And I'm, even with delivery, it was like by the time the phone is hung up, the sandwich is already done. God. Wow. And I'm, I'm talking about moving. I loved it, though. I was I was in there with a bunch of kids. I was still 17 at the time, 18. So I was in there with a bunch of kids my age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was having the time of my life. Yeah. I got fired. <laughs> You got I'm fired so from dead. that job. I got fired from Jimmy John's. I was only there for like three weeks. What happened? Yeah, I was only there for like the three weeks. The best time of your life for three I was weeks. Having, I was having a ball. A ball. So and I 100% got fired. Um, I I was switching shifts with people and because I'm not a morning person. So yeah. I like to close, but they all, always gave me morning shifts. So I would switch shifts with people and I would not show up to their shift. <laughs> So you're just I giving shifts away. I was just giving shifts away. And I was like, oh, I don't work today. And one my boss called me one day. <laughs> my boss called me one day. And he was like, you coming to work? I said, who coming to work? I don't work today. And he was like, you right, you don't work today. And I was like, what that mean? He was like, you was on the schedule, but you not no more. I was like, okay, so when's the next time I come in? He was like, you don't. I said, I don't. But I'm oh. on the schedule for Wednesday. He said, no, you're not. <laughs> you're like, wait, I didn't, nah. I didn't quit this time, though. Keith. I Keith. <laughs> I don't go to work today. You right. You don't. <laughs> nor nor ever swear. again. I swear I'm not exaggerating. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just don't come in. Oh, just don't come man. back in. This so is why I hung up the phone and I'm just laying in the bed like, I was like, did I just get fired? <laughs> That's yes. my first time experiencing that. <laughs> and I was like, did that just really happen? I just got fired. Absolutely. So am, again, in my head, I'm already in college, so I don't care. You're I'm like, leaving the, the school man. in a few weeks. I'm like, it don't make no difference. I'm going to school. <laughs> So I get to I, I leave Vegas and go to Indiana because the school seat, uh, school semester started right. I'm there for four days. They called me into the office. So first the first four days, let me let me back it up since we doing a full story. Jesus I love it here. Key. I love it here. So since we doing a full story, so I don't miss nothing. I'm going to Indiana, but first I got to make a pit stop in Michigan because that's where my friend Davion and me and Davion went to the same school in Indiana. Mm. So we both got the scholarship together. So I'm like, oh, this is dope. I haven't seen him since I left in April. Uh, everybody think I'm living this big lavish lifestyle in Vegas when in reality I'm getting fired from Jimmy John's and putting my hand in boiling water. But they don't know that. <laughs> they don't know they that. Don't they think I'm rich. Yeah, they Snapchat think we done made it. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, Snapchat is crazy. Oh, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm flexing. Right. I'm palm trees, rocks, and oh, yeah, yeah. I'm living it up. I'm taking a Jimmy John shirt off before I post, and you don't know what I'm, what I'm doing. <laughs> you think I own a, a Jimmy John's franchise at this right. point. Like, right. So I get back to Michigan, and again, he think I'm I'm set. Yeah. So his his parent his his stepdad was a cop, and his mom was like a teacher, I think. So his parents had money, yeah. real money. Yeah. So I get there, and he's in Southfield. He's in a really nice house. I get there, and we're supposed to go from his house to Indiana. <laughs> they were gonna drive. They did a full like um what's the word like a full go away party. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They did a full go away party for him, and they just like oh, and that's his friend. Oh. And they kind of like was like, oh, Davion, yeah, yeah, we so happy you you going and you going to school, you making us so proud. Oh, and your friend in the back. 
And I kind of just like, damn. Like, right. now the facade is over. They know I ain't rich. They know I ain't got no money because I only came down there with the money I made from Jimmy John's and yeah. I saved like 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. So that's all I had to my name. Um, so I get there and I'm just like, damn, I left Vegas for this. Like, mm-hmm. I'm at this fucking go away party. I'm sitting in the back and I'm embarrassed basically. Yeah. Uh, so we drove there with all this family. They drop us off and I didn't have a room set up. Because I had left school so abruptly that I didn't have time to do the full onboarding process. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't have a, I didn't do a tour. I didn't set a room up or any of that. So they had a uh, hotel set by the college that was for the kids like me. Yeah. Uh, but there was no kids there. They're all like twenty year olds, mm-hmm. twenty six year olds, mm-hmm. twenty five year olds, kid people that want to go back to school basically. Yep. Yep. Um. So they put me in a hotel room after I had already seen. Davion get his like go away party and his parents drove us out there. So we in his dorm and we doing it big. They got all of like the um we went to Walmart and got all of the set, the yeah, sheets the and sheets all of that. Yeah. Like, it's like a movie. Room. Yeah, it's like a movie. Yeah. And they all like hugging him and crying. And I'm just like sitting on the bed and they like, We you want you want us to drop you off at the hotel? And I'm like, Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So I go to the hotel by myself. Dang. I'm sm- a small kid. I graduated high school. I was like four. Five four, five three, wow. maybe 120 pounds, 130 pounds, very tiny. Yeah, I'm in Indiana by myself, don't know nobody except for him and he in his big ass dorm room. <laughs> um, they put me in a hotel and I was roomed with this 30 year old white man. Oh my god, today! And and, <laughs> and I put my bags on the bed and he walked in with his key already because he was there before me. And I thought he was a housekeeper at first. So I was like, oh, no, I don't need nothing. I don't need nothing. He was like, no, this is my room. <laughs> he was like, I've been here for two weeks. What are you doing here? And I was like, oh, I'm trying to go to school. And he was like, me too. He looked like he had kids already. He probably like, did. He probably had kids already. So at this point, I don't know where I'm at. And this is a, this is not a hotel. This is like a motel, basically. We in Indiana. We in, uh, what, what state was it? We in Indiana. We in the heart of Indiana. Uh-huh. I went to Indiana Tech, and it's the hood. Like, Indiana, the hood, the country hood on top of that. Uh, <laughs> it's a country hood. So I Lord. basically, I'm hating it. I can't fucking stand it. Yeah. I go to the dorm with uh, Davion every time after, or every day after class. I just end up going to his dorm because I don't want to go back to this hotel with yeah. this random man. With the old so I'm sleeping on the floor. <laughs> so I'm sleeping on the floor in his dorm room. But again, I'm living a life. Yeah. I'm enjoying myself. I'm um, out with friends. We going to parties. We drinking. We smoking. I think I'm grown. My dad called me and he was like, hey, I see you at this party. And before he could finish the sentence, I said, nigga, get off my phone. I'm grown. <laughs> hung up the phone. <laughs> full blown hung up the Can't phone. Leave. I, I, I'm so happy I'm doing this because I'm giving you all the full Can't story. Leave. I'm not missing no details. I've never done this before. I hung up the phone. I'm like, no, nah, I'm grown. I don't, I don't need you. Oh, Jesus. What, $200? They call me $200. The $200 gone. I was going to say, $200 $200 gone. gone. (laughs) 200 was gone at Walmart because I felt like I needed to flex. He was buying sheets. I had to buy sheets. He was buying Jeez. snacks. I had to buy snacks. <laughs> yeah, I, the 200 gone. 200 been gone. Oh! So I'm on a hope and a prayer <laughs> and, and just confidence, arrogance. I've always been an arrogant person. I'm an arrogance. Wow. Full blown arrogance. I'm snapping on him. I hung up the phone. And, but uh, why? I don't know. What did he do to I, make nothing, you say that? Nothing. Hey, he told me not to go to a party. party. Yeah, yeah, exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. I swear that's what I did. Be- he told me not to go to a party or do something. He, again, I'm bad with authority. Right. He told me not to do something. And before he could explain himself, I was like, nigga, get off of my phone. I don't owe you anything anymore. I'm grown. Oh. Um, and, and he he think again. I'm not I'm not telling him that I'm in a hotel room. I'm not telling him I'm sleeping on the floor. He think I got this dorm and that I'm oh. set basically, right? So, he. <laughs> so it's only funny because it's 100 percent true. Oh my God. Uh, uh, so, yeah, yeah, he was going through it. So uh, I think like two days after that, they called me to the office, right? And they was like, sir, uh, you didn't sign up for FAFSA. You didn't do any of that. Yeah. Like, you didn't sign no paperwork, no nothing. You just you here. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I'm on a scholarship. I think I'm balling. I'm on a scholarship. <laughs> Davion on the foot. We didn't, I made it to the States before him. So I'm like, I know he got a scholarship. I'm getting a scholarship. I didn't check no paperwork, no nothing. I just know what he got. I got to get what he got. 
So I'm waiting Showing for my up. dorm room. <laughs> I'm waiting for the full package. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh I'm about to be, I, I was like, my dorm room about to be bigger than his. I'm about to have my own bed. <laughs> like, I just knew, I just knew, I'm, I'm again, arrogance. It's, ar it's all arrogance. I'm like, oh, I just know. Where is my stuff at? That, I'm just Boy, waiting for I went it. to state. Four days. I'm just waiting for it. I'm at this point, I'm at, I'm irritated with the people. I'm like, nigga, we'll take y'all so long. Yeah, we'll take y'all so long. They take me to the office and they like, you don't have no paperwork filled out, sir. <laughs> Who are you? Yeah, they was like, they was like, only thing we have is the offer letter that we sent you. What? So we only got your name and your information from the offer letter. They was like, that's all we know about you. We don't know nothing else. He treated it like a birthday party invitation. You sent me the invitation. I just showed up. That's not <laughs> Keith didn't even sign up for real. He he just showed up. No applications, no nothing. Mind you, I was doing at school. I was finishing school on on the computer, so I didn't know what what to do. I'm finishing school, and I thought I thought that was my college application. I didn't fill no college applications out Bless at all. Your heart, People sweetie. was going to career day and college day. I wasn't doing none of that. I just showed up, and I thought oh that that's God. what it was, he right? Had the paper was like, y'all told me to come here. <laughs> that's exactly. Y'all had the money, and I was so <laughs> lost when he told me I had to fill something out that I didn't fill out. So oh. I'm sitting in this man's <laughs> office, and he like, no, you owe us twenty thousand dollars right now, or you gotta leave. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, y'all supposed to be giving me the yeah. money. Yeah, I was like, I was about? like, okay, what about the scholarship? And he said that scholarship offers two thousand dollars. <laughs> 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 I said, damn. <laughs> look now, look, look now. Now I'm in his man's office. I'm in. I think it was Gary, oh, Indiana. Shit. I'm in Gary, Indiana. Oh shit! In his man, I might be wrong. It was somewhere in the. It was in the country of Indiana. <laughs> I'm sitting in his office and I'm just like, oh, this is the part on the movies where you call and you have somebody put a loan out for you. I said, I know somebody gonna give me a loan. I just know. It. Called my brother and he like alone. The fuck! I thought you had a scholarship. I thought you was in his big. Didn't you just tell dad to to kiss your ass? You hung up on him. And I'm like, and I'm like, forget that, forget that, man. Listen to me what I'm saying right now. I'm like, listen to what I'm saying right now out my mouth. And he was like, no, we ain't. <laughs> And he was like, no, That's no, old we... news, man. What are you talking about? That was, <laughs> that was, that was days ago. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> the situation has changed completely. <laughs> I now need eighteen thousand dollars <laughs> right now, and I'm talking about like immediately. Hell, I was like, I, I need your car. Indiana. I was like, tell me your car information over the phone. <laughs> like it was that dire. And he was like, no, you're not getting no fucking car information. Oh my so, god. No. Uh, <laughs> Um, so like, at the time, I'm like, oh, okay. Forget what I so said. What I'm... <laughs> on Wednesday. In fact, is, is that, is no, that, man? I just, I didn't want him on my phone. You I just to wanted it. to email Josh, him. Josh, Josh, you beat me to it. You beat me to it. So he was, so my brother was like, I'm not giving you no loan. And I was like, man, put that on the phone. Put that on the phone. My dad got on the phone. I was like, dad, I need $18,000. And he was like, what happened to you being grown? Where'd all that go? And I was like, I was like, you know what? I'm coming home. <laughs> the conversation ended there. I walked out that man's office so defeated. I said, oh. I said, oh, this is what adult life is like. <laughs> so now I got to swallow my pride. I got to call my dad and apologize because now I got to go home. I've only been in college for less than a week. Yeah, the breakup was I've only been grown. the most eventful no, 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 four no. days. In any <laughs> I've only been grown for a week. Monday to Thursday, no, you're no, like, no. change. I, Keith again. was only on the property of college for a yeah, week. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I was going to classes, problem. too. What? None of those classes were scheduled under me. I was going to the classes Damien <laughs> went to because I thought we had the same he, he said, He said, this class sounds fun. I'm going to go here. Keith, you didn't even register. No. He, said, he said, nigga, where you going? No, look. I'm I said, coming. what class we got? I said, I said, print me off a copy of the schedule so I know where to go. So I don't got to ask you every time before we go to class, print me off a copy of the schedule. I, I went to six different classes every day for those four days. I was doing homework. Oh. I was a student. I was a legit student. I was going to open practices. I was running with the team. Oh. I was talking to the coach. I was picking out my locker. I was like, oh, that's going to be mine. I like that one right in the back. Oh. I thought I was a Sir, Indiana who are you? Tech Why are you? student. Why are you here? They didn't even I was in a hood. They didn't even question me. It was a technical school, so it was oh. like a, a, co a community college. Yeah. They didn't even question me. They was like, I, I guess. Said, he go. I was like, he can run. Like, they basically was like, yeah, you can run if you want to. I mean, I don't know why you're running. Oh I'm my in a God. I'm in a cafeteria. I'm everywhere. Like I'm a student. He go I go there. here. Yeah, yeah. I got I, I I will show you a picture after this. I have the memorabilia on. It's an orange shirt with, with two hundred. Yeah. Got that memorabilia. I'm here. Like this is my school. Like <laughs>
<laughs> I got Indiana Tech school pride. I'm a. It was the the mascot was warrior. I'm a warrior. I got, I got, I'm sending my dad pictures of me in the. I'm sending my mama pictures of me in a weight room with the shirt on, lifting weights. Oh, I didn't thought I made it. So, so fast forward to me having to make the call and basically saying like, "Hey, I'm coming home tomorrow. Book me a flight." <laughs> And at first, my brother didn't want to book me a flight, so he hung up on me. And Dumb. I called him back like an hour later, and I was like, they revoked my hotel room. Oh, um, my God. I don't have a hotel room to go to. I was like, I'm homeless. I have to get back to Vegas. <laughs> and my brother's like, okay, I guess it's serious. I guess I can fly oh, you back. Geez. So he flew me back to Vegas. Uh, again, I thought that's what college was. I was like, oh, I didn't already did a semester. I didn't did a full semester, and I ain't like it. <laughs> I did a week. <laughs> I did a week, and they were, again, like, it, it wasn't my glasses. Me. It wasn't for me. So I get there, oh and instead of accepting that I had going about this the whole wrong way, I built this conflated ego that I was mad at everybody else. Oh, and I was like, no. I was like, college is stupid. I don't want to go to school no more. I don't want to do that. I'm only leaving on my own accord. And I had really <laughs> built this up in my head that I was the reason I was leaving. I had oh. built it up that I was only gone because I didn't want to be there. Oh, my God. So I get back home in Vegas. Um, at this point, it was I didn't want it to call it home because I'm like, I'm from Michigan still, right? right. So I get back home to Vegas. Uh, Davion didn't even care I was leaving. He just was like, okay. He was right. having to he get like, you right. about his yeah. floor of his room. He was like, all right, now I can bring girls over, basically. Oh, my God. Um, so I get back to Vegas, and my brother, he is my youngest brother. He's four years younger than me. Uh, and he's always been very vocal. So we now I went from thinking I was grown to living back in the same house and we sharing a room. Oh wow. He's I'm 18, he's 14. We sharing a room. We got two bunk beds and the bunk beds are across from each other. Um so I went from thinking I'm an adult to realizing how much of a kid I actually am. Mm -hmm. Um and every night before I go to sleep, he's telling me how much of a loser I am. Oh. Full blown, straight to my face. Wow. Like he like, no you can't you better not raise your voice to me. You just what? got kicked out of school. You a loser. You ain't got no job. You ain't in school. You ain't doing nothing with your life. You a grown man sleeping on your mama couch, full blown Why every day. Why you going in like that? Every day, my brother is a nuisance. Every day, <laughs> he full. And at this point, I'm in the deepest depression I've been in in a long time. Dang. Because I'm like, oh, the reality is sitting in. Yeah. He right. Yeah. I'm not in school. I don't have a job. I got fired already. I didn't quit a job. My track history with work is already terrible. I didn't got kicked out of school. Yeah. I don't have no other offers. Right. Nothing is. Nothing in life is looking right to me right now. Right. I don't have nothing going for me. Um, my oldest brother, he come back home because uh, he was living in a different apartment with his wife at the time. Mm. So he come to, to the house and he like, what are you doing here? It's the middle of the day. It's like two in the afternoon. What are you like just laying around watching TV for? And I was like, what else, else am I supposed to do? Mm. I, at this point, I'm so depressed. I don't want to go get no job. Again. Right. I didn't already. I thought that that's what a job was, was sticking my hand in the tomato can. I'm like, I'm not doing that no more. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not doing I'm that. Not doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'll just rather sit here and just be a bum, basically, <laughs> before I do that. Um, I'm living like Jody, basically. I'm mm. full blown, like eating all my mama's snacks. <laughs> Walking around the house like in the middle of the day, like asking my mama what she doing for work, <laughs> like where's she going? <laughs> Can she pick me up something when she get back? Oh, <laughs> I'm like full blown. Yeah, yeah, I'm that. Yeah, I'm that. So my brother come home and he like, what are you doing? You stink. Like you not showering. You it just in this house. You ain't combing your hair. I had a natural fro at the time, so I was like natural locks almost. Yeah. And he like, bro, you look terrible. He was like, come to the gym with me right now. Um. Mind you, I did really well in high school, so I'm thinking, oh, I'm just about to go in the gym and dominate people. I go to the gym. The first day, he takes me to, uh, who is my coach now? His name is Dewey Cooper. Very, uh, You know Francis Ngannou, the UFC yeah, heavyweight yeah, yeah, champion? Yeah. His coach. Oh, okay, got Very, it. very well-renowned coach. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I go. I'm thinking, I'm about to run through everybody. He throw me in. This is where it get crazy. He literally is like, hey, my brother walks in. He's like, hey, this is Keith. This is my younger brother. He's fucking up in life. He don't got nothing going for him. I just want him to be able to train with the team. Dewey plays no games. Mm -hmm. Dewey, like, if you're going to be here, you're going to be here. You're not going to be playing with me. Yeah. You're not going to waste my time. <clears throat> At the time, he was still fighting. He was like 38, 39, 40, something like that. So he was still fighting. Um, and he was basically like, if you're going to be here, you're going to be here. He gave me a pair of gloves. Never put on a pair of gloves in my life. He gave me a pair of gloves that didn't fit me. He gave me a piece of paper towel that he wet for a mouthpiece. Stuff it in my mouth. And he made me go eight rounds with an Olympic boxer. Damn. Oh my God. I go eight rounds. Very first day in a in a gym ever. He can attest to this story. Very first day in a gym ever. Uh, I go eight rounds with an Olympic boxer. The guy's like 20 years old. Uh, we're about the same size. I'm whooping his ass. 
Oh, wow. Whooping his ass. No technique. There we go. Uh, oh, Because I was expecting I the worst. I thought it was going to be going the other way. Know, What's I wild hate. about you telling us stories? We always think it's going <laughs> the, the opposite, opposite direction. I'm, like, oh. I'm telling you, and I'm whooping his ass. Like, to yes. the point where Dewey is like, who is this? Right. Like, what is he doing in here? Like, you, you punching or wrestling? I'm punching. Oh, it's you full never, aggression. You never boxed? I only fought. Never never boxed. I only fought. He was taking all that college aggression out yeah, of that little yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fully, fully fighting. Just like yes. he did in the wrestling. He didn't know what to do with the aggression. I'm talking about I'm full-blown just street fighting. Yeah. Uh, it's catching him off guard, basically, is right. what it was. Right. It's not that I had better skills in him where I was more like. You just pissed. If it, I'm, yeah, I'm just hot. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm feeling tested at this point because I'm like, you going to throw me in here with him? All right, you trying to embarrass me? All right, now People trying to embarrass you. They're trying I, to embarrass it's me. It's a consistent thing it's with your different. life. Yes. So it, I'm like, it all right. It a rage in you. So yes. now it's time to fight. So I'm whipping his ass. Um, I get out the ring. We both bloodied up. Yeah. We both like spitting up blood. It's, it's one of them. We was yeah. in fighting, fighting. I'm throwing him out the ring. Uh, it's, it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. So Dewey is like, I like him. I like his aggression. I like his attitude. Um, let's bring him to the team. And my life changed forever. Wow. My life changed forever. <sighs> Wow. Once somebody believing in me, my brother Man. believed in me, and Dewey believed in me. Um, I start training every day. I start focusing on on fighting, um, and I really like found a home for it. I trained for a year straight. I went straight to amateurs. So usually you're supposed to train for a long time. Mm -hmm. I was like, nah, mm -hmm. I want to get some money. Yeah. I trained for a year straight. I went straight to amateurs. Uh, I went four and zero as an amateur. I start professionally fighting at eighteen or and I was twenty. I start professionally fighting and. I went, I think I was like three and two, three and one, three mm. and two. And I was like, this is my lifestyle. This is what I do. Mm. This is this is me. Basically. So your, I was what was your last day. fight? In September of last year. Oh, so last like, year? Yes. I'm still you, a freshman fighter. Uh, yes. Right? I, 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 knew you were, I just didn't we ain't know even there yet. Little, we ain't even there yet. We ain't even there yet. Uh, he, no, I, I was skip. watching I it. I didn't realize it was September yeah. last year. Yes. That was last week. Yeah, I want to skip. I want to skip. So... I, I started fighting, and I'm, like, really taking it as a career. It's serious at this point. Uh, I met my wife. Oh, I, I completely skipped a part of the story real quick. I met my wife because no, no I got a job at a shoe store right after I started training. Okay. It was, like, a couple weeks after I started training. I got a job at a shoe store called Asics. Asics, like, running shoes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and rocking those. Me and my wife was working there together. Mm -hmm. oh. And um, she, she never lets me forget this story. It was like an onboarding process where we did like a team building exercise and we had to make a circle and hold hands with somebody who was next to us. She was next to me. Mm. We held hands and we looked at each other and she swears she saw fireworks. She swears she saw something. Your life is literally a scripted movie, uh, It's a movie, movie bro. Yeah. It's a movie. I, I, I I'm telling you. It. It's a movie. I swear I'm Will Smith in Pursuit of Happiness. <laughs> He's like, I'm there. There's I some people promise who would like you. to make this. That's why I'm so happy I did this. <laughs> That's why, That's, so That's why I'm so happy I'm here, Kev. You know somebody with a studio. That's why I'm so happy I'm here. pieces of the story. So she sees fireworks. So at A6, holding hands right. at orientation. We're holding hands. Um, that was I a sick interaction. I Joshua, didn't know it. Right I'm sorry. <laughs> I was there. So you were only 18, 19. I'm 19. About to turn 20. Okay. 19 about to turn 20. So I didn't know it at that point. I was just like, oh, this pretty girl. Very pretty. At first, I didn't think she was in the men. She had a short haircut. She was she very, like very the short. Women. And that's how I treated her. And I told her that. And I was like, oh, you a homeboy. I was like, she one of the homeboys. I was like, oh, yeah, Ronnie cool. Because she real, like, down to earth. I was like, oh, yeah, Ronnie cool. I can talk to her about anything. Yeah. And I'm looking at it as, like, that's one of the homeboys. Yeah. And she came to me one day. We was working together. And she was like, um, she she did something. And she had took her jacket off. Mm. And I was like, God. I said, like, wait a you minute. Said, no. I said, one of the one of the homeboys got a body hey, on him. Hey, amen. Amen. I said, God, hey, damn. Amen. She, amen. She, she born and raised in California, so she she carried herself real confident. Like yeah. and she always had big hoodies on. She always had like big jogging pants. This day she was wearing leggings. Keith was like, hold up. And she took the video. I have completely misjudged yeah, that situation. 100%. I said, wait a minute. I said, wait a minute. You said fireworks. You say, yeah. Let's talk more fireworks, about that. Fireworks. Say, yeah. Tell me more about this. Because I've seen some now as well. Yes. <laughs> I'm talking about the body crazy. I'm like, oh, okay. I said, okay, we can reevaluate this. <laughs> so, so she came to me the next day oh, and she was funny, like, man. like she came to me the next day funny. and she was like, hey, I want to work out. I hear you a professional fighter. 
Let's work out together. And I was like, hell yeah, let's work out He's together. Absolutely. What do you mean? I'm a professional it's trainer better. now. You know, I, I was in the ring with an Olympic athlete. You know, that's it's, not, it's, a it's not a joke. I lied to her and motto. told her I'm a professional trainer. I was like, I will train you and whoever you want me to train. I swear to you. I do group training. She brought her best friend. Oh, the my. next day, we went. she was a, a college student at UNLV. The college in Las Vegas. Yeah. We went to UNLV. She brought her best friend, and I ran a full practice. A full, <laughs> I had them stretching. I had them running. <laughs> you know, this really helps your quads. I'm telling you. you uh, I, I tell you no wild. lie. I tell you no lie. I'm running a full <laughs> practice. I damn near got a whistle at this point. Like it's like a full. It's full blown. It's a full blown practice. <laughs> After the practice, we end up going to a car. We end up going oh to her car. Oh my god! Right? We sit in her car, and she think I'm hot shit. She think my shit don't stink. Right. I'm a professional athlete. I didn't told her I'm rich, and I'm only working at a job for fun. <laughs> Yay! He, he was rich. Oh, wow, you know, just to stay down to earth with the commoners. That's, what I, told I'm her. That's, that's really what I told so her. So I stay grounded. Right. You know? right. I was telling all because my brother at this point. He went from making ten to ten to like he's making like a hundred a fight. What's ten and ten mean? Ten thousand to ten thousand. So ten thousand a show and ten thousand a win. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, got it. So he started with ten thousand a show. So ten thousand a show basically means as long as you step in the cage, you are guaranteed ten thousand. Okay. As long as you step in the cage and the bell start, you getting ten thousand dollars. I get I get knocked out for ten thousand. As long as the bell ring, that's what you get. Yeah. But if you win, you get another ten thousand added on top of your. If you lose, package. that's it. If you lose, you only get the the show money. Got it. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. But after you get off the regional, so the regional scene starts at like. 200 and 200. Three Ooh, and three. Two hundred dollars. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, wait. You fighting for free. Uh-uh. Oh, I yeah. thought no, no. I, see, I didn't get to that point yet. I didn't get to that point in the story. I was so, like 10 inches to step in. No, 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 no. no. So, look, Dude, I didn't even get to, that, to the point of that story yet. So, I, like I said, I'm telling everybody at the job, like, my brother's rich. We got this big ass, because we did have a big ass house. Right. I wasn't paying none of the bills. Right. But we got this big ass house. We rich. I'm, I'm like, at this point, he got a Mercedes. We set. Yeah. But I know in my head, I want to have my own things. So, that's why I got a job. Um, she don't know that. We get in the car. Again, she think I'm hot shit. Uh, <laughs> and we start flirting. And I'm like, oh, wait, this is not one of the homeboys. We actually like flirting, flirting. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's going to sound like a fucking movie. You remember the uh, ATL where Nunu yep. and uh, yeah, Rashad yeah. were sitting in the car? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. We were sitting in the car. Really? We were staring at each other. Uh, a song started playing in the background. We kissed. And I was like, oh, we go together. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's we it. You real bad. She had her, she, I never had a car at this point. I'm a kid still. Yeah. Uh, I had just got my first car. She got her own car. She got her own house. Well, she, I thought it was her own house. She was living in an apartment at, mm-hmm. on like a college campus. Yeah. But to me, I'm, you grown. Listen. You, I got a grown woman. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's like, when I went to college, I stayed in hotels. Exactly. You got a whole exactly. apartment. Exactly. You got an apartment. <laughs> well, he, shared, he shared a room and with also, somebody. I was not registered at the hotel. At this college. You <laughs> got an apartment. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you grown. Yeah. I was like, oh, I ain't letting you go. Right. Right. No, you ain't going nowhere. Uh, he's like, you ain't going nowhere. Lock him so, down. <laughs> immediately. So, uh, like I said, we kissed that day. She just like, oh, I just kissed some dude that I like, basically. Um, and I think we are in a full relationship. <laughs> So, so I invite her out to uh, I invite her out to a uh, function like the next day. I had some friends from an old job. Um, I had some friends because I used to lifeguard when I very very first got there. Um, so I had friends from a lifeguarding job, right? And they were like um, my, around my age, but they were drinking really heavy. At this yeah. point, I'm not a drinker. I was a smoker. Yeah. So at this point, I was like, all right, I'm gonna take you to this function that they're going to, and it was like a um hookah lounge mm. they had told me they knew the owners of the hookah lounge so the hookah lounge was supposed to be free it was supposed to, i was like vip again i'm hot shit <laughs> i invite her <laughs> with that like a hey, everything oh. on me come with you and your friend y'all get everything everything you want to drink we going to the front of the line we get there we wait in line <laughs> <laughs> we pay <laughs> we pay we wait in line uh, we get there uh none of the drinks are free at all <laughs> At all, uh, like, y'all can slow down. On yeah, the, I, the I didn't even, oh, we didn't even get to that point. As soon as I heard that we had to pay, I was like, "It's time to leave." I was like, "Who house are we going to? We going to one of y'all houses." So one of my friends at the time, he had a house, and I was like, "Oh," and I played it off. I was like, "I don't even like this fucking hookah." Right. I mean, this is lame. We gotta get out of here. Internal <laughs> monologue. I gotta get out. Of here. I was panicking. I was like, "Oh, the gig is up." She know. I was like, "She know I'm broke. The gig, the gig is up." But she was being very supportive. I think she knew. She didn't let me know she knew. So I'm still playing this this role. <laughs> We get, we get to What's my friends. Anyway, yeah, I was like, I don't even want to be here, bro. 
we get to my friend's house, we get to drinking. Blue, what's it? What what is it called? Uh, you talking about the blue drink? Blue, hypnotic. Blue, hypnotic. Oh, we get to Lord drinking Jesus. hypnotic. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm not a drinker. We get to drinking hypnotic out of out the bottle, and I'm talking about smashing it. <laughs> hypnotic I get in pissy drunk. I get pissy drunk. Literally. She's not drinking at all. She's not drinking at all. She might have had like a sip. She's a classy. Yeah. Yeah. She might have had a sip. If that. Uh, her and her friend weren't drinking because they weren't comfortable with the situation. Yeah. I was an asshole. I'm mm-hmm. drinking. All my friends are drinking. We like partying, getting wild. One of the friends that I didn't know, one of the friends of my friend, he go to touch her best friend and like grab her. Oh no! I don't play that. Yeah. So immediately I'm like, oh, get your fucking hands off of her. I'm drunk. So I'm going overboard. Uh, My wife at the time, she was like, oh, well, it's time to leave. Yeah. It's time to go. She was like, me and my best friend are leaving. I'll see you later, basically, right? And I was like, oh, we leaving? <laughs> she didn't mean that. Yeah. She meant her and her friend were leaving. like, me and my girlfriend and her friend are going. I said, yeah, oh, it's time to go then. I was like, I'm following you. I'm going where you going. She like, I swear to God, she would tell you, I'm 100% right. She was like, where you going? I said, I'm following you. She get in the car, I follow her home. <laughs> I, yeah, we in a relationship. She she not thinking we in a relationship, but I'm like, that's my girlfriend. I'm going to my girlfriend's house. I follow her to the crib. My Again, God. I'm super, super drunk. I follow her to the house. I shouldn't have been driving at all. Uh, get to her house. She like, you really fucking follow me home, bro. I was like, yeah, yeah. We, oh I live here, basically. <laughs> right. N- yeah. Instead of her kicking me out or telling me to leave, she let me stay there for two days and she took care of me. Wow. I'm throwing up on the flow. Oh, key. I'm pissy. She taking care of me. She cleaning my throw up. She got me snacks. <laughs> she gave me hostess out of her closet. Key. I'm taking showers. Uh, she wearing lingerie. I ain't never been with nobody wearing lingerie. Key. I was like, I'm with a grown woman. <laughs> I, I'm in love. I'm in love. I swear to you. I was like, oh, I made it. I made it. Come to find out, she's like just being nice. She got a full boyfriend at the time. What? A whole oh! boyfriend. A okay, whole boyfriend. Bro. What? A whole boyfriend. He in, col- he okay, in, in California buddy. still while she in college. Man. A whole boyfriend. The, the, that's, whole why boyfriend. that's why I didn't date anybody going into college somewhere I'm in else. Love. I'm in love. <laughs> Ronnie was like, like, and she kept trying to tell me. It wasn't even her fault. She kept trying to tell me, like, leave me alone. She's like, nigga, you are my trainer and co-worker. Yeah, you just training me that I find attractive. Leave me alone. Uh, And I'm like, no, 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 baby, you said fireworks. What the fuck happened with fireworks? (laughs) That means something to me. You understand? Fireworks. So come to find out, like I said, she got a full boyfriend. They've been together for a long time. Like, since middle school, (laughs) type shit. Says middle school Kidney type. Kidney is shit. a home wrecker. Yes. Give me a whole sad piece. So Don't I'm know like, it. oh, it's raps. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm taking you from him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you mine. <laughs> it's raps. I'm I'm full blown. Like I ain't going nowhere, basically, oh my right? God. So long story short, she ended up leaving her boyfriend from me. Well, I see. Um, well, that part well, in between that. <laughs> Spoiler alert. In we between got children. That, <laughs> in between that, I was still fucking up. I had made her leave her boyfriend just so I can go. Be a hoe, basically. Oh, oh I was a hoe. I was. A hoe. I was a hoe. You have everywhere. left that woman with that boy. I'm everywhere. I'm talking about everywhere. I'm terrible. Oh, I'm he's, terrible where is the everybody. redemption? This Literally, is where we I'm go. terrible oh, for everybody. God. So, <laughs> so we basically. Everything had a life. Turn, I'm man. terrible for everybody. He had a life before the tick in the top. I'm terrible. So, uh, <laughs> basically, fast forward to 2018. No. We break you are up. the youngest, oldest, twenty-six-year-old I've <laughs> ever met he in my lived life. Twice of fast a, forward a life to we 2018, did. we break up, right? Because again, I'm fucking up. Yeah. I'm talking to girls. I'm texting people, and she like, I'm not having that. At this point, she's serious. Like yeah. I said, she didn't left her boyfriend for me. She then like moved in with me, and we, in her eyes, we serious. But in my eyes, I'm in love, but I still want to be young. Yeah, kind of thing. Um, I'm still being influenced by everybody, so I'm out drinking and smoking, even though I don't do that. Mm-hmm. I'm out partying and whatnot. Um, and she sat me down one day and she was like, either we you gonna get yourself together or we're not gonna be together at all. Mm-hmm. And she left and she went back to California. Um, at this point, she had stopped school because she got really sick. Mm-hmm. So it was just me and her. We were like working at, I had quit ASICS already. Mm-hmm. I quit that shit like two weeks into the job. I'm gone. After, After I found her, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you only had a job because you were rich. After anyway. I found yeah. her, I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up working as a lifeguard again. And she was, I forgot where she was working. But basically, she had quit ASICS and we were just together. And I'm fucking up. Um, she leaves me. She goes to California. And I'm living with my brother. I'll never forget. 
I was broke as a joke. I had quit every job I had. I'm working as a lifeguard, but I'm not making no money for real. Uh, I had an old Cadillac that he had bought me. And I'm so entitled at this point, or I'm so used to being entitled that I'm trying to break out of that. So I'm like trying to get my shit together. And I'm like, I really want her back, but I don't know how to say I want her back. So I'm doing everything independently. I had an old Cadillac that had ran out of gas and I'm pushing it down the street. And I'm pushing it by myself. <laughs> I go in the house and I ask my brother, I'm like, hey, you got some change that I can use to get some gas? And apparently I had walked in like with my head down and my shoulders shrugged. Yeah. And my brother, met, my little brother made fun of me. He was like, you got some money I can get for some gas? <laughs> and I was like, damn, that's what I was like. going to stay on your neck. You're that little yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah, terrible, man. bro. He was terrible. <laughs> so, uh, so basically I just said You're that to say. relentless, same. man. I was so driven to be independent at a point. I got my shit together. I caught her. We got back together. We ended up moving in together. Uh, and this is where it takes a turn. This is where oh, everything goes positive. Which direction it's going? Positive. 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 This is where positive. everything starts. Like, this is this is how I am Jesus. who I am today. Okay. okay. All this right. is how okay. I am who I am today. Here we go. Here we go. Act three of the Keith Lee story. Yes. So we didn't got through, again, I had never done this before. We got. We didn't got through all of the drama. We didn't understood why I am how I am. Um. I understand what it feels like to be in pain. I understand what it feels like to be forgotten about. People people not believing in you. Um, you not believing in you. You not thinking that you're worthy of anything. Because mm-hmm. that was the only reason I was cheating, really. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't mm-hmm. think I was worthy. I didn't think that she loved me as much as she said she did. Yep. So yep. I, I said I was in love at first, and I was acting like I was in love. But when it came to show true love, I didn't have that. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't love myself for real. Mm, I didn't wow. know what it meant to really care about me. Yeah. So when it, somebody actually cared about me, and I finally had her quit her, leave her boyfriend and really pay me attention, I didn't know how to take that. You didn't think you were worthy of that. I didn't think I was worthy. Yeah. So I was showing out in all of the ways I possibly can to show you, like, I'm not worthy, even though I always had it in me to be worthy. Mm-hmm. So we moved in. Um, I stopped going out to clubs. I started learning how to say no. Yeah. Um. I start saying no to everybody. Everybody's like, he changing. He weird. Like he falling in love with this girl. Like they really getting serious. Uh, we were living in a small apartment, a one bedroom apartment, uh, on Boulder Highway, which is the hood in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like a thousand dollars a month. I'm broke at this point. I didn't quit my uh my job at, as a lifeguard. I'm working for Postmates. So I'm doing Postmates to pay the bills. I'm still a professional fighter, but like I said, we get to that. I was making two hundred and two hundred. So I was making no money at all. Yeah. And I was so proud that I didn't know how to ask my brother for anything. I didn't want to ask him for anything anymore because he had brought us to Vegas. He had us living in his nice house. Yeah. And I was like, I'm on my own now. I'm grown and legit grown this time. Um, so I'm using her car to do Postmates. Mm-hmm. I'm using her car, going back and forth. Um, no money being brought in at all. And we are just like madly in love. Mm-hmm. Madly in love. Mm-hmm. Um, she got me back into God. Got me really paying attention to my faith. Mm. Um, I start working at H&M, and life is going splendid. Working at H&M, doing really well for myself. I was broke still, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. thinking I was doing really well for myself. Yeah. We had moved into the place that we're in now, um, and we at the time, we spent like $1,000. Mm-hmm. So, again, still broke. Right. Um, I was like, it's time. So I was making $500 a fight. This is in November of 2019. Uh we had got we were getting along so well and i was like it's time to get married i don't know why mm-hmm. i believe in god mm-hmm. so i was praying a lot yeah. uh i had told her i told this story on tiktok before but i had told her like okay i'm about to go out to this uh, we had no money for rent so i was like right, i'm about to do this fight in um miami for five hundred dollars and my rent my portion was five hundred dollars and i was like as long as i can get this money we should be good but when i get back i'm proposing and we having babies Mm-hmm. And she was like, "What?" I said, "Yeah." With the five hundred, with the five hundred, let me put one in yeah. your girl. And at yeah, this yeah. point, yeah. Like, at this point, it's yeah. three years since we've been living together. So I'm really like faithful. I'm listening to God. Yeah. I'm the man who I am today. Yeah, I'm yeah. full blown. I'm tending to her. Mm. I'm catering to her. Uh, I'm a great boyfriend at the time, yeah. wanting to be husband. Um, and she saw that potential in me. Mm. And she's always wanted to get married and have kids. Um, that's why she ended up taking me back because she saw the potential in me. Yeah. Um, so she was extremely elated that I had said that. She was like, are you f- for real now? Like, yeah. are we being serious? Mm-hmm. And I took her broke control. I flew it down the to- uh, <laughs> flush it down the toilet. We really making this baby. I was like, I'm dead oh, serious. My. I was like, I'm dead serious. <laughs> I want you to know I'm dead serious. She jumped up and she was crying out of joy. And she was like, this is all I've been asking for. It's for you to be serious, for you to really want me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did that uh, fight in Miami. I won, came back, proposed to her. Two days after I proposed, we got pregnant. 
with my daughter Carter. God, dog, I was geez. serious. I got back and I we got married and we had a baby. <laughs> Two days. <laughs> got that dog. Two days later, I had a baby. That, no, that, that baby was, like, was already there. The same day. Left that fight, the that same fight. day I found like that I found out that we was, that she was pregnant. I got a call from my manager. That fight that I took in Miami. Won me a uh, won me a contract with Bellator. Mm-hmm. It was a six figure contract. Okay. The same day that I had the baby, so life is splendid. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm married. Yeah, I got a baby. I got money coming in. I won my first two fights in Bellator. I'm doing fucking well. Yeah, life is amazing. The pandemic start. The pandemic start, and I start doing TikTok. I started doing TikTok because my social anxiety was so bad. I couldn't. If you go back to watch my interviews back in 2019 or 2020, I was so bad. I would literally be like shaking and I'll be talking to people and I'll be like, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm, I'm a fight and I'm a and it was so terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I started recording myself just to get over that, uh, over that hump and get yeah. comfortable. Um, and that ended up turning into me doing full blown TikTok. Um, I ended up losing my contract in August of 2021. Um, I ended up losing two fights in a row to the four, to the champion that's the champion right now and a guy who was ranked number five. Mm-hmm. Uh, I took both of those fights on short notice. Three weeks notice, I cut 30 pounds for both of those fights. I told you you could cut 30 in three. Didn't I tell you you could cut 30 in three cut, two weeks ago? I cut 30 pounds in three weeks. Both times. Bo- for both those do, fights. So I need to get into wrestling. Is what I mean. 30 to pounds? UFC. 30. I, so they called me and I was, Kevin. They called me and I was 166 <laughs> pounds and I had to weigh in at 136 pounds. What and do you even weeks. do? And three Just said um, so it, so cutting is different than losing. Yeah. It's real it's a super detailed, but I'm gonna just get real quick. Is so basically you just cut down all your calories. You go into a calorie deficit. So right. you lose more than you take in, basically. Yeah. Um and then I was training three times a day, six days a week. Kevin, we can do it. I'm out. <laughs> while doing postmates. We can do it. Uh, while doing postmates and TikTok. And, and TikToks. TikTok. Yeah, I was TikToking, postmating, and work and training every single day um and like i said i lost 30 pounds uh this was normal for me i was used to losing that much though so because i've been doing it my whole life i don't think it's 30 can i don't know how your way. brain still operates it, do, it don't it. well not well okay that's the <laughs> part uh, that well. i'll be like so you are usually supposed to have like six to eight weeks but they basically how the fight game works is that they call you they call you you want you are on call contractor so when they call you you got to be ready so it was an opportunity of a lifetime i was like yeah i'll, I'll take it they was offering me 25 and 25 Okay. Twenty five grand, twenty five grand. I was like, I need that money, Frankie. Wow. <laughs> I need that. Frankie, I gotta have I it. Need that I need money. that money, Frankie. <laughs> I gotta have it. So I basically I took the fight. Uh, I lost both of them. Mm. Um, they cut me, and the way they cut me was like they didn't call me. They didn't say anything. Uh, so I never got stopped in a fight. Stop is basically like getting submitted or getting choked out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got submitted for the first time in my last fight in August of 2021 at Bellator, and it was the most embarrassing thing I've ever went through in my life. Mm. I'm bleeding. I'm fucking going. I went unconscious. I got up, didn't think I was unconscious, ran to the side of the cage, oh, fell no. face first into the side of the cage, oh, key. came back up. This is a video on YouTube and, and on fucking Worldstar. They posted on Worldstar everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. At this point, I, I already had a million followers on TikTok. Hey, so it was all over TikTok. Oh, it was all over TikTok. I get back on, on my For You page and all I see is me running to the side of the cage <laughs> and I'm bleeding. I'm oh, bloody not, everywhere. Not them serving up to you. <laughs> oh, I'm hey, talking look at about this video. Like, full You'll blown. like this. I don't know. I Related don't content. I'm talking about full blown like bloodied on national TV in oh. front of 40,000 people. Uh, I had a million followers on TikTok. I wasn't making any money from TikTok at all. So I get home Gee. and I'm like, okay, I call I my manager. I wonder what it was like to, for a fighter to see them after a bad show. Oh, it was terrible. You got to oh, really was, look that. I was the most depressed I've ever been in my life. I thought depression was the story I told you earlier. Yeah. I was going through it. Man. I had a one-year-old. Carter was one at the time. Um, like I said, I had a million followers. So I had people telling me like, bro, why are you still fighting? You got a million followers. No money was coming in at I've all. I've trying to tell people about at TikTok. At all. I'm talking about at all. They will give you a million followers. I was making and- $400 a month off of TikTok. Mm. At, no money at all. Mm. So I had just folks. lost my six-figure contract. At this point, I didn't even know I lost it. Actually, I didn't even know I lost it. I'm in the house after losing the fight. I'm bloodied up. I can barely see out my left eye. My baby is coming up to me. I can barely walk. She's coming up to me like, daddy, daddy, daddy. And at this point, she's not really talking. But I can see she's like, are you okay? She like reached out to me, want to hug me. I'm in the bed, curled up. I called my uh, manager and I was like, please get me on the fight card right now. I want to fight again. My pride is talking at this point. I'm like, yeah. I want to fight again. And my manager was like, oh, no, you got cut, bro. 
He was like, yeah, yeah, they let you go out your contract because you lost two fights. Dang. So that's all it takes. That they didn't say anything else to me. They just was like, you out your contract. Dang. Hung up the phone on me, right? He was like, we'll be back. That's all he said. He was like, yeah, we'll be back. He hung up the phone on me. I was already depressed. And at this point, I'm in a full-blown fetal position, crying my fucking heart out. Aww. And my wife is standing over me like, Jesus. it's okay. And she she rocking with me. She like, it's okay. Man. We got it. We She literally, this was in August of 2021. So I'm not talking about 10 years ago. No. This was less than two years ago. And she's literally like, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Um, I'm so depressed. I fucking... Words can't even express it. I'm yeah. like, and at this point, I'm not thinking about suicide because I got a little girl that's looking at me, right? And I'm married. Like I can't go to those those thoughts anymore. Yeah, like, I'm I'm living for something bigger than me, right? Yeah. Um, so I just prayed. I I was begging. I was begging, like, please just fucking find me a way out. Um, a restaurant hit me up that same day. It was like, hey, can you come try this food out? I was like, sure. Why the fuck not? I'm sitting in the car and I'm like, am I really about to do this? I'm about to make full content. I ain't got no job now. I lost my contract. I ain't got no job. I'm like, am I, about to, am I about to make full content for a fucking living? And God just kept telling me, like, listen to me. Just please listen to me. And I listened. Um, I started making, like, cooking content, and I started focusing on that. And by June of 2022, I got my first contract with Wingstop for six figures. Oh, my God. The same, God. Uh, the same exact amount of money. Punch you. The same exact <laughs> amount of money that I had lost with the Bellator contract. Dang. It's literally like less than six months later. So I'm like, God is amazing. God I, at is this amazing. point, I'm full. I had a million point two, a million point three million followers, and I'm finally making money off of it. June and I'm of like, I'm doing it right. That was like a eight fucking, months ago. Bro. Yes, so eight months ago, Kevin got the contract with Wingstop. Shout out to Wingstop. Wingstop is is God sent. They treated me so well over there. And more than one because um, also the lemon pepper. Oh, they man, treated me pepper. so well. But for you too, but they hey. treated me so well. And it's I w- so. Ronnie got fries, pregnant yeah. again mm-hmm. with my second baby in January. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we got the contract in June. So I'm like, oh, we good. The yeah. baby going to be here in September. We got some money coming in. We straight. In October, I got a call from People vs. Food. It's a YouTube channel. Yep. This is what I was talking about. Yes. I got a call from People vs. Food, and they're like, hey, we want you to be on the show. Uh, and I was like, me? I've been watching y'all since I was 18. The same way I treated you. I'm like, bro, I've been watching you since I was a kid. Yeah, no, it's, it was crazy. Been watching you since I was a child. And they <laughs> literally was like, we want you to be on the show. Child. And I had 1.6 million followers, and I was like, absolutely, I'll be on the show. And I was like, what do, I talked to my wife, and I was like, what do they post on their channel? And I was like, they post food reviews. They eat food, and they like, oh, this is good. That's not good, basically. Yeah. Um, and I was like, what would I post on my page that would make people not only come from their page and, and look at it, but actually follow me? Yeah. And I was like, food reviews. So I talked to my wife, and I was like, I'm going to post one food review every day until I get on People versus Food so people can come and follow me. I did... One food review, it was called 303 Food Truck. Mm. Uh, people were tagging me. It was like, hey, you got to go try this. You got to go try this. Um, I went, and it got 10 million views. And um, the line was around the corner. And a, a news broadcaster came out and was asking people in line, like, where did you hear about this set? How, why are you here, basically? Mm-hmm. And people were like, oh, I'm from Virginia. I saw this black guy with locks on TikTok, and he said that the food was amazing. So I'm coming to try this cheesecake sandwich. He said it was good. That happened for three days straight. Line Dang. out around the corner. Wow. He had a four-hour wait time. And I was like, oh, Yo. this is something I can do. So I was like, let me, and mind you, I'm not even thinking that far. I'm like, let me just keep posting these food reviews because I told my wife I was going to keep posting them. Mm-hmm. I did one for Aroma Latin Casino. They reached out to me and was like, hey, uh, we basically ain't got no money. We uh, can't afford rent. We only getting four to five people in a day. But the food is amazing. I'm the daughter of the owner. And he don't know I'm reaching out to you. I would I love for you to one. come try yeah, it. I remember this you one. Almost, that's almost verbatim what you said. He was like, yeah. I would love for you to come try it. I said, cool. Not thinking nothing of it. Went to go try it. The video got like 10 million views again, like almost 15 million. It was a line out the door. A line. I'm talking about down the fucking street. I go back and I see this line and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And the owner reached out to me and he was in tears. He was like, you saved my life. Oh my God. He was like, you saved my life. He was like, I was in $40,000 worth of debt. Uh, he's like, I was about to close the doors. What mm. does that do to you? Uh, it broke me down. <laughs> wow. It Man. broke me down. And again, I this was a year after I had lost my contract. So mm. it was a year from being at the lowest point of my life, uh, thinking that everything was over with, everything was done. Um, and now I'm just seeing these blessings that I pray for and, and just blossom. And they just blossom and right in front of me. Mm. Uh, at this point, it's the end of November. I told you at the beginning of November, I had 1.6. At the end of November, I had 5 million followers. Oh. And, and, <laughs> I'm, oh. and I'm literally Come just on. like I'm in shock Every time I post a video I'm in shock 
I'm praying more than I've ever prayed in my life. <laughs> right. I'm praying I saw before, you with you. Like, I'm praying 20 times I'm a day. I'm telling you. I'm praying before I shoot a video. I'm praying before I edit. I'm praying before I go in the house. I'm praying nonstop because I'm so used to this fucking roller coaster, Kev. Yeah. I'm about to cry again. I'm so used to this fucking roller coaster that I'm like, I know something bad's about to happen. I know it's coming. But I'm just like, I'm praying. I'm Big like, leap. I'm just thanking mm -hmm. God for being in the position. And it just kept going and going and going. Mm -hmm. And then I went to um, Frankincense Pizzeria. Come on, that's the one now. I went to Frankincense Pizzeria, and the same thing, Summer, who was an employee there, she reached out to me, and she was like, Frank, no, no, I'm reaching out to you. Uh, we really slow. Two people a day. Not a making day? any. Two people a day. He said, we opened the doors literally just to be here. And mm. he's like, we have great Yelp reviews, but the only bad Yelp reviews is because we... Say we open at 1 o'clock in the morning, but we can't open that late because we don't have any business. So we usually close at 7 o'clock because nobody comes here. Um, she like, Frank, don't know you coming. Please just come and try the food. That's all I'm asking for. I had like, I I'm, gra I'm growing rapidly at this point. I had like 7 million followers, 6 million followers, maybe. Something like that. I had like yeah. 6 million, 5 million. Um, and I just go and, and I call my order in. Frank answered the phone. And Frank, like the most... Nice person I've ever met in my fucking life. Yeah. He like, what do you need? The service. Service, service. is amazing. The service is amazing. amazing. Again, amazing. <laughs> I've only done like 10 food reviews to this point, so nobody really knew my face. They might have known like, oh, he had 10 food reviews. It was only 10 at this, this point? Right? Nobody. The price he didn't know who I was. Up and pure, bro. He didn't know who I was. He had no idea. I was not known around Vegas at all for being a food reviewer. Oh People on TikTok kind of just start calling me like, oh, that's the guy to do food reviews. Yeah. But really, like, it was just like, I'm just Keith, basically. Yeah. So I call. He had no idea who I was. Um, I go. And as soon as I walk in, he like, grab you a Gatorade. A big, tall, white man, six feet, six, three, tall, great beard, come around the corner. And he like, grab you a Gatorade out of there. I was like, why? He was like, just because I want you to have Gatorade. And I was like, oh, cool. Okay. Again, I'm thinking he at this point I'm like he got to know something. Right. He got she had to tell him like yeah, he yeah. got six million followers type <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he had no idea. He give me a Gatorade. We sit and talk, and he just kept staring at me. He was like, "Bro, what do you do?" And I was like, "What do you mean? What do I do?" <laughs> He's like, "What do you do?" <laughs> I was like, "Uh, I make food videos on TikTok." And he was like, and his face went blush blush red. And he was like, "Wait, I thought you were an athlete." And I was like, "Oh yeah, I fight too." And he was like, oh, okay, that's crazy because I've wrestled my whole life and my kids wrestled. So I just saw how you walked and how you carried yourself and I thought you was a wrestler. That's why I asked. Mm. And little do we know, I was a blessing in disguise. Mm. He started talking to me and he was like, uh, well, you do full reviews. Okay, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm in extreme debt and I'm about to close the doors because I have no idea what I'm doing with this business. This has been my dream for 30 years and I finally opened it and it's become a nightmare, basically. Uh, he said, like, I have no idea what I'm doing with it. I'm about to close down. Uh, I can't handle it basically. And he was, and I was like, well, I can't promise anything, because this is only I've only had two reviews do that well. So I was like, I, I don't know if that review gonna do that well. Mm -hmm. So I can't promise don't, you anything. Don't put it up on me. Yeah, don't put it on me. Right. Don't I'll be like, oh, I'll pay for this Gatorade. Yeah, We're bro, high. it's it. I I'll said, pay don't for do that. Blue. Blue. Yeah, I'll pay I got for the cool. Blue. I got the I didn't pay at, at, Still to this point, I didn't pay for all my food at Aroma, at the three hundred three food truck, at this place. I paid like a hundred dollars. Gave him a hundred dollars, and again, Wingstop was paying me well. So I'm like, cool, I can eat a hundred dollars. Paid a hundred dollars. And that $100 turned into him having a four-hour wait line every day for the last three months. Still? I can believe that. Still today? Still, I can believe still, that. I can believe that. Still. If you go to Frankenstein's right now, he has a section in the corner for airport luggage because people come straight off the plane and go to him. So he has a section Yo, in the corner. I can believe it. That is influence. That is he has Oprah's a section favorite in the corner level. Yeah. For literally for for luggage, I, he went I'm, from I'm having like, three employees to twenty seven employees. Whoa, you changed a bunch of people's life. He had twenty seven. God employees. was sending you. All right, gonna fix that with food truck. Mm. Then you go down to fragrances and you mm. fix that. And you ain't gonna never have to put your hands in hot soup this water. Was, he didn't just he didn't just get you paid. He got other people. That's what I'm saying. Oh. December. December, Joshua. This was in December. It they is called me February. They called me <laughs> and was like, "Hey, the news called me and was like, hey, we've seen what you've done.'" We would love for you to come down and do a news piece. And I was like, no, 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 that's Frank's. I was like, you go give Frank that attention because he deserves it. Let me, this is what I, I didn't This is why up. you're the people's champ. <laughs> this is the what I've been wanting to come the, on. He, <laughs> he be the the girl made the uh, uh, the sandwich, the, 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 uh, quiz yes. no sandwich, and then okay the girl with, with the cookie good. at the job. and the cookie down there, and, yeah. and, yeah. And, and the brand was like, oh, Keith. And Keith was like, yeah. no, no, but you're not going to do Y'all going to go, and, and you don't. People of your size mm. 
don't often redirect, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you be literally taking money out of your own pocket. Absolutely. And Absolutely. and listen, I remember you said on a TikTok, this mm -hmm. this man going to go far. Mm -hmm. You said, I don't make no money off these small businesses. No. They're barely making it. I'm going to tax them brands. 100%. Send a bond. Send a bond. Y'all people. I tax them. I tax them. Tax them. But the, yes, and that, that's why you're the, and the people, if you get the support of the people, mm -hmm. The brands don't matter. That's, that's what I'm telling that's you. I don't that's be doing crazy branding. That's a fact. That's a fact. If you got the people of my Patreon, and I just want, real quick, people who are watching this for free, this is supported by the Patreon. People. Come on. And we're going to give you all the full interview because Keith it. deserves this story. But the this people go will keep oh, you. This you go already know. <laughs> the brands come and go. Yeah. The shows come and go. Mm -hmm. But the people, mm -hmm. go, Tabitha Brown, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, she has mm -hmm. the support of the people. Yes. No, the yes, brands yes, yes, follow yes. where the people go. Mm -hmm. Brands Absolutely. don't know what they want until the people tell them what they want. Mm -hmm. They didn't know about Tab, so the people was like, we They're love hot. Tab. Mm -hmm. Target. What it was for me is I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm waiting for this roller coaster to drop. Yeah. I'm waiting for it to go down. Yeah. So I'm like, I have to treat people the way I want to be treated. Come mm -hmm. on. You I have never to treat people the way I want to be treated. That's your... uh -huh. Listen, one and thing I genuinely, I, learned... I get to 1.6, I get to 3 million. I'm like, oh, that's it. 3 million. I love being at 3 million. That's it. I get to 5 million. I'm like, oh, 5 million, a lot of followers. Mm, that's I'm not good. abundance. I'm good. I'm set. I get to 7 million. I'm like, God damn. Nine million. Stop saying Ten that. and a half. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I wake up every morning. I'm telling you, to this day, I'm waking up every morning like, what the fuck? Right. Like, I go and look at my account and like, ain't no way that's mine. Right. Ain't no way. It's yours. <laughs> ain't no way. But the whole time, I'm literally just being myself. I genuinely, genuinely, People can tell that's that. genuinely being myself. I remember my first video of watching you was you eating some cookies. Mm. The It was like some a very expensive uh, cookie. Last crumb. Last crumb. Yes, yes, so yes, this yes, is yes, before yes, yes, you yes, had yes. already over a million, but you uh -huh. weren't at your big I level. I wasn't making no money for real. And <laughs> I literally sat and watched that whole video mm. because I was mm. like, he is just really being chilling. himself. Yeah, eating yeah, yeah, these yeah, cookies. When he did frankincense, he was, was like, the fries are terrible. Yeah, they were. was like... Two out of ten. I was like, <laughs> oh my God. The craziest thing is that people were going to make my exact order, and he had fixed the fries after I left. People were going to make my exact order and being like, oh, they would send the fries back that were fixed to say, I want the fries that Keith had. Wow. Swear. They were like, I want unseasoned they fries because Keith That's had lit. unseasoned fries. I literally, like, he <laughs> called me and was like, people are asking for me not to season fries. What Swear. on earth? Swear. I'm, I still, to this day, even telling you this story, I have imposter syndrome. I be thinking I'm lying. He's one of us! <laughs> I be <laughs> thinking I'm lying. Imposters, imposters! I swear, I be Are thinking I'm playing. We don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. So when you we be talking about accolades and we be telling stories, I just be like, I guess it's true. Man. But that, it, it, it legit, like, I, I, the way I think about it is the same people you see on your way up are the people you're going to see on your way down. I literally was, was going to say this. this. I promise you. The when, same people you see on your way up are the same people you're going to see on your way down. if you treat everybody nice, they're going to not let you fall matter. too far. Mm -hmm. Because you'll never have to worry about it. Mm -mm. And listen, when I they gonna pick here, you up. Awesomeness mm -hmm. TV, mm -hmm. the people who were assistants, mm -hmm. who I was nice to everybody, because mm -hmm. I was like, we ain't supposed to be here. Back, that's how I felt. Hello, 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 hello. When we moved back six months later, they were producing movies. And they're like, you never know. they're running studios and all, and they were grabbing coffee at that time. Mm. And I was like, nigga, I'm not supposed to be here anyway. Right, so right, hello, right, right. hello. hello. That's Keith me. said hi That's me. to the the cleaning man was here. <laughs> and I didn't know who and I was listen, like. Listen, me and Angela and John ain't been at the studio late. Never. The this cleaning the man time. was like, who are you? I'm like, I, I saw kept a on shadow stage. figure walk across. <laughs> I'm me. That's, <laughs> That's the name. name. He like, I, I never seen you. Keith was like, hello, sir. How are you? Good evening. Because I'm telling you, I just be like. you don't know who he might. He might be the cleaner of the world. You never know. And in my eyes, again, like you say, the same people you send your way up, the same people you send your way down. You won't fall far if you are nice to those people. Because they're going to be like, hell no, not you. Right. You ain't falling. They're going to pick you back up. But if you were mm -hmm. an asshole on your way down, they're they going to look at you. They're going to stomp you down. Yeah, they're they going to chase you like that mom. Finally. Finally. Yeah, they're they going to chase your ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to finally. They're going to piss and kick. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact. So I, I feel like I've always just treated everybody the same because I know what it feels Man. like to to think you gonna be that shit. You yeah. think you him. Yeah. You ain't him yet. <laughs> and I know it and, and God was telling me like you gonna be him. I promise you you're gonna be all of those that arrogance that I was talking about and that confidence, it was true. It was rooted in something. Yeah. I just had to find it. 
Mm-hmm. I just had to find it. And I was trying to search for it. I think that was the problem. I was looking for it. I was trying to find it. Once I let go and let God and mm-hmm. trust it, mm-hmm. it found me. Mm-hmm. It came to me. I didn't know I was going to help small businesses. I didn't, I, I'm a kid with social anxiety that got fucking anger issues. They got kicked out of every school. Yeah. And my parents gave up on me. And nobody believed in me. I had no idea I would be saving people's lives. Mm. I went to Mr. Gary. Mr. Gary's a food truck. I went to Mr. Gary. I'm driving. I'm riding my bike home from. I do ten mile bike rides. Riding my bike home. See this random fucking truck in the middle of nowhere. Oh, it's down a, a random street with lights on, neon lights. I drive. A, I rode my bike up to it, and I'm like, "What is this? It's a seafood truck. I'm allergic to shellfish." So I'm reading the menu, and I'm like, "Oh, I can't have any of this." Before I can say that out loud, Mr. Gary, short black man, walk up to the window, and he like, "How can I help you, sir?" And I was like, "Oh, never mind." I can't have anything. I don't eat shellfish. And he was like, oh, don't worry about it. I got burgers and fries. I was like, but I can't have anything that touch shellfish. He was like, I get fresh grease, fresh oil, fresh pots, that's, fresh pans. That's that service. Mm. This is 10 o'clock at night. Wow. 10 o'clock at night. Nobody's there. He hasn't had a sale all day. And he's still sitting there giving that same customer service. Dang. So I'm like, all right, bet. When can you do that? Can you do it right now? He's like, he said, you know what? I'm going home to my family because I've been here all day and I really haven't made anything. So I'm going home, but can you come back tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Now, at this point, I had like $8 million. This was a know. few weeks ago. This was maybe like a month ago. I had like $8 million. He had I no remember idea. this. I remember he this story. No idea. He don't even have TikTok. So he had no idea. He's, he's don't know people. They like, He don't know who I am. <laughs> he's just like, oh, this is a guy that want a burger. I can make him a burger because at least I get $10, basically. That's how he was thinking about it. So I get $10. I ain't made $10 today. $10 is better than nothing. So I go back the Damn. next day and... He saw me and he immediately like turned white in the face. He was like, "You the guy from last night?" And I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "Oh, I called my mama. Mind you, this is a fifty year old man." He's like, "I called my mama and she told me, oh well, he'll never be back because she thought that I was just basically fluffing him and like mm. trying to make him feel good." So all night he was thinking about making his ten dollars. All night he was like, "He ain't coming back. I ain't gonna get no sale. I know I ain't gonna get no sale." He's basically t- talking to himself how I used to talk to myself. Like I know mm. this shit. It's this roller coaster going down. I know it. Know for a fact, ain't nobody about to come and buy mm. nothing for me. And his mom had told him, like, basically confirmed his his doubts. So he saw me and he was shocked. And he Man. was like, "Just in case you did come back, I did clean all the grills. I did change the oil. I did get new fresh utensils. But I didn't think he was coming back." And I was like, "Please make me that burger." I had did a um. A giveaway to the less fortunate, maybe like two days before that, with um, Beauty to the Streets. Shout out to Miss Shirley. She is fucking amazing. We went out and we passed out pieces from Frankincense. Mm-hmm. We bought a bunch of pieces of Frankincense, like $1,000 worth of pieces. Bought a bunch of pieces, bought everybody in line pizza, um, and went and passed it out for the homeless. We did a live that day, and in that live, people had donated $450. Mm-hmm. I took that $450, and I bought the burger with it. He had a cash app. He didn't even accept car or cash because he was so small. He just had a cash app. Dang. And he um, he gave me my burger. I sent the cash out to him, and it was one person behind me. And he had no idea. Again, he had no idea who I am. He gets out the truck, and he's like, excuse me, man, give me a second. He's like, come here, bro. He mad at me. He's like, come here. He's like, get over here. I was like, what happened? I was like, what happened? So at this point, I'm like secretly recording. I'm like, so what happened? And he was like, I think you made a mistake. And he's like visibly mad. He's like, I think you made a mistake. And I was like, what mistake? He was like, the burger is $10. And I was like, okay. He was like, you sent me $450. And I was like, yeah, I know. And he was like, what do you mean you know? You a black man. This is exactly what he said. He said, you a black man like me. You out here hustling like me. I can't take that money from you. He think I'm scamming. Mm. <laughs> he think I'm cracking cars. Right, right. He like, nigga, they ain't <laughs> not about like, to come, come on, in and show me. No, 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 you know, you don't right. have to fuck up my business. <laughs> right. You about to fuck up the only thing I got going. I got, I got one customer. Give me back the burger and the yeah, not yeah, coming back that's to me. Exactly. He was like, give me back my burger, damn near. That's <laughs> how, the attitude he had. He was like, you not about to scam me. Right. Ain't nobody coming over here. You wasn't even coming back. You wasn't about to buy this ten dollar burger. So I know you're not giving me four hundred fifty dollars. I basically told him like. This is from a live. I do TikTok. And he immediately broke down. Man. He broke down. And he was like, I never thought this would happen to me. He's like, I've seen other people on the internet get blessed like this, but I never thought that this was real. Um, and he was in full-blown tears. And he gave oh. me a hug. Um, and I was like, I literally told my wife, I was like, this is the one. Mm-hmm. I went home. I made the video to that effect. That night, I called him back because um, that video had 3 million views in one hour. So I knew it. This is after the Frankenstein debacle. This is after the um. This is after Frankenstein. This is after uh Aloha. I mean Aroma. So I knew at this point. I like yeah. I know what's about to happen. Yeah. I'm letting you know what's about to happen. So I called him, and as soon as he answered the phone, he said, "Please be Keith. Please be Keith." I said, "This him." He said, 
My phone is blowing off the hook. He said, I've answered 100 calls in the last hour. What happened? And I was like, I told you I was posting a video. I did, I told I couldn't promise anything, but I told you I was posting a video. He said, people have sent me $30,000 worth of money. Oh! Swear. Oh, $30,000. That's my God. Oh, my God. $30,000? A burger wasn't sold. A he, he sold shrimp and crab legs. Nothing was sold. They sent him cash app donations from the oh video. He didn't have to get in his God. truck. He didn't have to sell anything. Oh he didn't have to stand is... there at 10 p.m. by himself waiting for somebody to come. <sighs> he had $30,000 on his phone for his access. And he was fucking shell-shocked. I he said, bet. what are we doing, Keith? <laughs> he said, what are you doing right now? <laughs> you scamming, ain't you? Exactly, <laughs> what are you scamming? Exactly, what, what, what are you doing? <laughs> and I went back to him the next day, and that 30000 had went to like $50,000. Oh $50,000. And he had a line out the door. A so now he, get, he got the 50 and he got customers. A line around the corner. Wow. And oh, every time I talked to Mr. Gary, now I actually went to him like two days ago, and he just was like, he was like, business is slow down, but I'm faster than I used to be. He was like, my slow now ain't my slow back then. Hey! <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. He said, my slow now ain't my slow from back then. He's like, the, the business has slow, but I'm doing great. Wow. I paid my credit cards off. Come I don't on. owe anything. He was like, I was in thirty thousand dollars worth. Your of job debt. is done. Done. Your job is done. done. I've never took a dollar from Mr. Gary, from Fakesense, from Aroma. None of those people owe me anything. Mm. Not a dime. That's why you're the people's Not champ. Not a dime. I've never taken a dime from anybody. That's the people's champ. You'll never have to buy a burger in your life. Oh, no. If you lose everything, I went you... back up there and I paid for my food again. <laughs> I went to. I've been to Frankincense back Gary three is times. He is like a man at the bottom of the heart. Mr. And Gary, again, like what is going on? That's why I'm so happy. I told the story because now it makes sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm this way because I've been through everything. I know what it feel like. Yeah. I'm at. I was at the bottom of the bottom multiple times. Man. Multiple times. I I get where that's coming from. So now that I'm in a position to where I can be me and get these blessings. Oh, everybody around me getting blessed. Everybody yeah. coming with me. Everybody coming with everybody me. Eat. Yeah. Everybody, everybody eat. Everybody got to eat. Everybody yeah. got to eat. Because I see myself in people now. Yeah. It's like I'm, I'm finally at that point where it's like, yeah, I'm 26, but I have a lifetime of experience. Let me tell I have you. I have a listen. lifetime of experience. Now that, don't <laughs> that part. Okay. Yeah, that Indiana experience. Tech thing is one people. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. their only story. <laughs> That is one of yeah, I have a lifetime 12 of experience. Are you, are you going to go back to Indiana Tech? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to give you an honorary doctorate or something. They're going to be like, here is your AA. <laughs> To Keith Lee, a champion of the people. We <laughs> have a scholarship. It's crazy. So I went from, like I said, getting kicked out of college, getting kicked out of every school I've been to, doing Postmates, seeing these big-ass houses, not being able to afford any of them, mm. and going back in my wife's car, going back to her and just being like, everything going to be all right. Man. Going to her with $500 in my pocket, flushing birth control pills down, mm. and saying, we're going to get married. The audacity of man. Man. Okay. I got 500 man. and I put the baby in. We have it, baby. Look, the baby in your body. I don't regret that one bit. They cost 30000 to get that. I don't regret one bit. <laughs> no. And the craziest thing is, like, she was more happy than me. She was like, thank you. She saw it before I saw it. She saw me oh, being me do. before I saw it. She, saw she it was like, please have babies with me. So, Because I know you about to be somebody. Please, because I, I, I see it in you. She's always believed in me from the very beginning. Man. Shout out to my wife. Man. She's always she believed in me before. Ronnie! I knew what it was to That's believe That's why you go get the Kit Kats. That's why he's yeah. still going. When she was pregnant, I was getting McDonald's everything. Fries. Everything. You and that's, I, how, that's how it first started after the family and cooking content was Ronnie's pregnancy cravings. Yeah. I would go and get whatever she wanted. Hot and cheap. I mean that from the bottom of my heart, whatever. And those videos were not scripted at all. She literally would be like, I want a cold Pepsi. I'd be like, baby, it's 2 o'clock in the fucking morning. <laughs> She'd be like, cold Pepsi. Carter want a cold Pepsi. I said, Carter getting a cold Pepsi. That's how they do. They the baby. Baby. The baby getting a cold Pepsi. <laughs> And and I said it. I I live a life with no regrets. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for the things that I've been through. Come I wouldn't on. be myself. I I would be a, a shell of myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those that arrogance that I had turned into confidence. Mm. Wow. That you, persistence. I would not believe you were had social anxiety from terrible. the way you. Are now? It was terrible, bro. You, I know, you, 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 yeah. you tell an engaging story. Yeah. Very TikTok, much. TikTok, TikTok did it for me. I ain't gonna lie. TikTok and my wife. My wife and my sister are the two people that told me. My my sister met me and my wife when we were 18 or 19. And she was like, y'all have to do YouTube. 
Y'all have to do Y'all YouTube. are adorable. She literally told me, she was like, y'all have to do YouTube. And while I was fucking around and doing whatever I was doing, we were shooting. I got like six. I was, I'm going to release eventually. Six drafts of us awkwardly sitting in the fucking one bedroom apartment we had together <laughs> and shooting drafts of YouTube videos. <laughs> And it was the most awkward shit you ever fucking see. Oh, I can't so wait. So awkward. No, so I just uh, I went down the rabbit hole of Keith Lee, mm-hmm. and your dance videos is what yes. blessed my I soul. I used to dance. <laughs> yes, I you used, did. I used to dance. I can't dance for shit. <laughs> oh. I, I got the rhythm of a two-year-old, bro. He did this I one move that he said, oh, it's terrible. original choreography, <laughs> Keith Lee. I said yes the it is. confidence. I'm <laughs> done. Yes, I've always been confident. <laughs> Always been confident. Yes, he did. You but, did that. But now my confidence is in, is in God. Yeah. My confidence is in my story. I know. I've been in front of 40,000 people and been choked out. I know eating food ain't got nothing on that. <laughs> Tell me that right now. I'm telling you right now. Nothing that you can say to me on TikTok is equivalent to me getting choked out in front of 40,000 people. I'm telling you that right now. It is nothing that you're going to do to me to make me feel that kind of shame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat this food and I'm going right. to pray to God. And I'm going to take care of these babies and my wife. Come on. Come on. That's exactly how I carry he myself. He said, I done been to the mountaintop no. and the valley low. <laughs> Come Absolutely. on. There literally is nothing worse. That's why <laughs> brands hate me. <laughs> These big brands, they starting to love me now. But when I first started, when I had six million, seven million, they hated me. <laughs> tell tell hated me what you my told me on guts. the phone, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so I have, a, a again, it's arrogance, but it's also confidence. I don't care what nobody say. I know you can't whip my ass. I know you can't. I know you can't. I walk in the room like that. I go to, to more board meetings, and I'm, I let you know, you're not about to play with me. What you going to do? Whip my ass? No, you're not. It's not happening. I know you're not. It's not happening. I know you're not. <laughs> no, and I'm extremely for confident. sure. I know can't nobody yeah. here whip me for oh, sure. Positive. I'm going to say what I want to say. And again, it comes from the, the authority <laughs> issue, but now it's rooted in I'm a very high-level fighter. Yeah. Before, I had that confidence, and I didn't know how to... What, what to do oh now i know what to do right (laughs) yeah i fought at the highest level so when i walk in those boardrooms especially when i had six million seven million i'm not doing anything still to this day and i can stand on this and be so confident i'm not doing anything i don't want to do listen Listen. he got the offer from mr beast and said you got to do three things for me (laughs) i'm and i'm not my wife is going to be in one of these videos absolutely period told him what it was I was watching that. And I said, "Keep just being a little bit." Nah. But then serious. I was inspired. Like Keith told you what it is and what. It, and serious. Mr. Beast can't whoop me neither. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, that's what I know. Okay. Okay. That's what I know. And you I, hear me? And God's name. And <laughs> God's name. And what I y'all love Mr. Beast. do? Cause can't Absolutely. nobody whoop me. Can't nobody Absolutely. Whoop me. So my wife better be in one of these videos. Man. Absolutely. We gonna help one of these places out. I said, come no. on. Then share it, like, share it, subscribe. Put it on all the platforms. Again, the roller coaster going up. So I'm like, while I'm up here, I'm getting everything. Out. Everything. Everything. I ain't mad at you. I'm not mad you at are. you. But it, like, it, Pursue it's and recover supreme all. confidence. So every, every character that I had as a kid throwing those stories is still here. Yeah. But now I'm using it to not only my advantage, but the advantage of the people around me. So let I me ask you this. Single-handedly changing the culture of how you handle TikTok I, and TikTok influencers. I love it. Yeah, that's the I, truth. I, we cannot be happier for you. For sure. Mm-hmm. What, now that this has happened mm-hmm. in, I mean, exponential growth in the yes. last six months. I've, yeah. I've grown 9 million followers in three months. Three months. Since November. <sighs> Since November. Since November. November. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you what, and this is not out of any jealousy. Yeah, this absolutely. is just what God absolutely. has touched you. Absolutely. In 12 years of YouTube, <laughs> of all the stuff I've done. It took me two years combined. to get 1.5 million, and it took me three months to get 9 million. Hey, man. When God's God touched timing. you. When God tell you it's time. It's time. It's time. It ain't nothing that nobody going to do. To, I've, I've said it a million times. It ain't nothing that nobody going to do to stop it. I when don't it's have God's time, it's God's time. Still. Let's not talk about what I don't have. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go down that path. Man. <laughs> but you know what, Keith? Honestly, I think, and, and I probably speak for Angel, Josh, and people who are watching this, mm-hmm. we, we want you to get more. Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's mm-hmm. like, if you could do mm-hmm. for people what you've done with what you have. Absolutely, absolutely. And you you could, bro, there's a, this Vegas is just one city. Yes. One. Yes, yes, yes. There's yes, a yes, million, yes, and that's the crazy thing. Actually, this is a small thing that I was thinking mm-hmm. When you were saying this, man, shout out to those people for still getting up and doing their dream. Right. When they was getting one sale. Absolutely. Or si- like Absolutely. the fact that That's they were still out there like, That's why I went back. all right, 
today. I love that. We gonna get it. Like that. you really yeah. sometimes it takes that level of like mm -hmm. ridiculous belief. Absolutely. Yeah. Almost delusion. Cause they was out there like, cause I'm like, I'm pretty confident, but a mm -hmm. full day with one cell or mm -hmm. like, oh, we got two people today. And they went and, and got up the next morning and still turned that. I know what on. that feel like. I'm telling you, those three years, <laughs> those three years from, from 2018 to 2021, those three years when I said that I got serious about my marriage and I got serious and I was mm. taken care of and I was devoted to her, I was broke. I was waking up every morning knowing I was going to be somebody. Mm -hmm. Didn't know how I was going to get there, but I knew it. So I was waking up every morning with that same arrogance, Man. that same confidence, that same, like, Swagger about myself. I was walking into H and M with no money in my pocket. Like I ain't gonna be here for long. Come on. I was on Postmates. Like I'm looking at these houses. Like I'd be in one of these in a minute. Bro, I'll see y'all in a second. I had no idea. Had no idea. But it's that that just that faith, that belief. Mm. Just waking up every morning and doing the same thing every day. That's the grind. Man, bro. Kevin Hart said it the best. That's the grind. That's... Waking up every morning, not knowing where you going next tomorrow, not knowing that the same thing is gonna happen the next day and the next day. That's the hustle. Dang. So, Keith, That's we know hustle. where you came from. Yes. Where are you going? Where God wants me to. Come on! Where he want me to be. Where Come he want on! Me to be. Yeah, where he want me to be. Yes! I, I won't even put no answer. expectations on it because I didn't expect to be here. Ooh. Mm. Now on to him. Come on. Who to is able to do exceeding abundant. 100%. Above, above all you could ask or think. I mean, 100%. he done did that with you. I don't know yes. how many times or 100%. how many more times. And he done use you as a vessel... To do for other people, and That's the amazing the thing, thing now, about your story. and this this part of my life, the amazing thing is that I know what it feels like to go down that roller coaster. Yeah. So I'm not afraid of it anymore. Come on. So I'm living without fear. This I part think, is called I think happiness. There's power. That's, this happiness. This you part hear is me? Called happiness. I know what it feels like to 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 go through that. So I have supreme confidence that I'm doing the right thing, and that's all that matters. Right. No matter where I go on this roller coaster, all I care about is that I've stayed true to myself. My feet have always been planted. Mm -hmm. My head has always been high to God. I've always been myself in every asset of the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To these brands, to these influencers, to these people with these blue check marks reaching out to me every day. I see y'all, but I don't care. <laughs> every day. I this is don't why I didn't want to ask. I, listen, uh, listen you were going to take that L. You were going to ask. And if he said no, then we were just going to keep I on trucking. I am me, and I will always be me. <laughs> the amount of people, I feel so bad for like Instagram models and women in general. The amount of blue check mark men that are in my DM, and they all start with the same shit. Yo, I'd be like, the, I'd be like, get the fuck. It's always the same thing. Yo, and I don't respond, and they'd be like, what's up? Get out of here. Who are you? I get know you got 10 here. million followers. I know you got billboard charts, but who are you after that? Like, what you Yo. want from me? <laughs> what you want from me? And they'd be like, Yo, let's collab. What? And what were we going to do? What are we collabing on? <laughs> Yo. What are we collabing on? That's Yo. why I told you when we first talked, I don't collab with nobody. Uh, bro, you nobody. and Paw Patrol. Nobody. And that's the very end I of the video. I be in a crib. Yes. yes, TikTok and, and God and my wife have helped me with my social anxiety. It's there still. Right. Yeah, it's there. I, I vibe with y'all, and mm. the vibe is immediate. When I got out the car, we hugged. I oh. knew immediately I was in the right place. Oh, yeah. We got, the you, hug. we got lunch for you. We knew you was hungry. Oh, up if the it's hug was wrong, I'm back in the car. <laughs> He's like, I swear <laughs> to you. He's like, I right, swear. So. I swear. And I'm learning, I'm learning that no is a full, complete sentence. Come on. Listen. I'm learning no is a complete sentence. So I wouldn't have lied to you. I yeah. would have gave you a hug and be like, you know what? I got to go. You would have drove all the way up here? A million percent. Uh, I walked in the freezing drove. cold. Listen, come on. For six Detroit. miles. I, I want you to know. You I'm dead nothing. serious. <laughs> dead serious. So the, the anxiety is absolutely still there. But when I'm around the people who I truly believe I'm supposed to be around, God erases all of that. You going to be all right in this yeah, business? Absolutely. Mm. He they be all afraid of, of people like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, they used to hate me. Oh, they used to man. hate me when I first came in, and and I was telling them like I'm not doing that. I don't give a fuck how much money you offer me. I was about to say Keith would have quit this podcast before it started. <laughs> Gone. Keith know how to quit a job. I'm, look, no, I'm not gonna name is. drop. I'm not gonna name drop. But a company offered me a signing bonus of two million dollars, and I told them to kiss my ass. Wow. Well, there ah, you go. Keith. Well, there ah, you go. Lee. Mm. For the two million. I'm not a millionaire. I'm not making that much money. Right. I'm I'm blessed. Right. But I ain't making nowhere near that. Mm. He said, but but I'm it not didn't align with me. 
It didn't align with me. It didn't align with my faith. It didn't align with my goals. It wasn't for me. That wasn't my $2 million. Ooh. That was anybody with 10 million followers, $10 million, $2 million. Yes. Anybody who had the platform I had, that was they t- t- $2 million to have. Because they didn't Ooh. look at me as Keith. Mm. They looked at me as an influencer with $10,000. Yeah. I mean, 10, 10 million $10 followers. followers. Mm. Yeah. They looked at me as an influencer with 10 million followers, and I'm not that. Mm. Yes, I had 10 million followers, but I'm a man of God. Go I'm on. a husband. You I'm, I, I stand in, in, in I integrity and my faith. I, I stand you. on what I stand on. I love him. And there's no amount of money that you're going to give me to stop me from being that. You know because what's the best that part about being broke? That ain't mine. The fear of, if you've already been broke. I ain't got no fear of being broke. I've I know what there. it is. He said we had a splendid time. Amazing. No that was my, some of the best times of my life. <laughs> Listen, when you ain't afraid of that, you can't be manipulated. I told you, you can't $500. Be... Me and my wife got pregnant. One of the happiest days of my life. She told me she was pregnant, and I knew I didn't have no money in my pocket. <laughs> I didn't care. <laughs> and like, I don't care now. He so, flushed birth control that they paid for it down the corner. No, no, no what the baby's got God is amazing. Inflation. God is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And again, she and I'm 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 so that's why I, I praise her to the highest extent. Mm. She was happier than me when I flushed the birth control down. Man. She, she was, was elated. She was elated. So so I to know that you got a partner like that that is willing to go through that with you. Yeah. I'm easily turning yeah. around two million. Because the way I look so the way I look at it is if I cap myself at this two million. I look at at it like, all right, if I take this and it's not mine, that's my two million. That's my cap. That's yep. all I'm gonna make. Yep. Because now your integrity goes out the window. Yep. Mm-hmm. Your honesty goes out the window because you're not doing it for per- for pure intentions. Yep. Mm-hmm. So everything that you stand on all goes out the window, but you got this two million dollars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's probably the highest you're gonna make. Yeah. Now, if you would have waited and did something that was for you, let's say you take a deal for a hundred thousand dollars. That hundred thousand dollars that's for you can turn into 20 million, 30 million, 40 million. And before you know it, but yes, it might take longer. Yes, mm-hmm. you might be going up a, a road where you working harder, but anything that's worth having takes a long time. You speaking to me now. Anything that's worth I having takes a long time. Because sometimes I'll be tripping and anything I'll be easy, I could cry. The easier that something <laughs> comes to you, the easier that it leaves. And that's exactly how it felt when they slapped the offer on the table. I was like, that ain't mine. Yeah, it sound good. I know with two million. Yeah, it sound good. But what what is that gonna do once the people see what I'm doing for that money? Yeah. Mm. What's Come it gonna on. do? Come like on. you said, people were the most important asset. Absolutely. People are the most important asset. And yeah. you can only I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. Once. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. That's what that's what's most important. You wanna be in this big ass house with these big ass cars and all of this overhead that you gotta pay every month and be miserable. Come on. It's only gonna last for a year or two. Mm. That two million ain't gonna last forever. Oh, no. You go oh, get that big ass go. house you and you, it'll it's go gone. faster sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. The IRS, that's coming. 40%. They said uh, oh, they coming. That's 40%. They said give so me that's, 100,000. That shit going to be gone. Uh, give me that eight, yeah, come on, get it. So yeah. it's gone before you even realize it. Yeah. And then you look up, and now what you got? You ain't got yourself. Listen, Ocho you ain't got said that money. this. He said, when your name is, you can always make money if your name is intact. Absolutely. If you lose your name. 100%. That's worth, I, and that's that's where my mind's always been. Again, it's the arrogance, it's the confidence. Yeah, I'm worth more than two million. Uh, I'm worth I, more I, than that. One hundred percent agree. I don't know what I don't know my my price yet. <laughs> I don't know I don't know where we where we going with this, but I, I know I'm going somewhere far, um, and I know I'm gonna make it with God. Key, yeah. Yeah. I, I know you have blessed us oh, on tonight. People's yeah, champ. Yeah, this is the people's God's champ. Amazing. I told you I wanted to do this. I was so happy we oh, did this. Oh, this was, I was and so I mean, I knew this. it would be good. Yeah, I'm so happy we did But I, I wouldn't want to do it with nobody else. How I wouldn't want to do it with nobody else. This was, I believe that. We oh, were like schoolgirls yeah, when you said else. yes. You, Kevin texted me and Josh oh, was man. like, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, oh my God. <laughs> we were going in. We were so happy. We are so happy for you. This is like, Genuinely, we will. I will genuinely watch you go to the moon and be like, <laughs> right. and he sat right here. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. Had him a chicken tortoga. That's a fact. That's a I'm fact. Gonna be over. Yeah, no, keep leaving. Whoa, yeah, right uh, before he became a hundred million dollars, he told us fact. right here. Yeah, he did. Had that's himself a, a chicken tortoga. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we had him some portos. He I, drove from Orange County, and I yeah. tried. I said, Keith, you ain't got. He said, I'm cool. I'm a I dog. I'm a dog. I said, we can get you a driver. I'm a dog. But dogs can But ride then he texted me like, hey, man, this this was further than I thought. I was, I tried you to could tell have been sleeping, Keith. I tried bro, to tell you. I bro, was... I hate driving in L.A. so much. Oh, man. It's 
six lanes, <laughs> and every exit is on the opposite side of the lane that you're in. <laughs> we tried to I tell missed you. four exits. I was fully paying attention. My 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 music didn't even connect to the to the car, so I was driving to Frank Sinatra, playing on the radio, playing full attention, and still missed four exits. You got you got to oh. put the wave on out here. Man, you listen to radio, ninety four seven. Seven. Man, I was like, where are we at? I can't are stand. You like, still what are we fighting? Doing? Yeah. So so I'm blessed enough. This the this the best part. I'm blessed enough to be in a position to where Bellator, who cut me in 2021. Reached out to me and offered they did. me a deal. Of course. I told him to kiss my ass. <laughs> Come on! I know it felt great. <laughs> kiss my ass. God is amazing. I love it. God is amazing. God is amazing. God kiss is amazing. my ass God in is Jesus' name. God is amazing. God oh, is amazing. how the well, well, well. How the they said they would be back. They how, said they would be back. How the tables, how the have, tables turned. have turned. Mm. So they didn't come to me for legal reasons. They didn't come to me directly. They went to my manager and basically were just kind of talking about it. Like kind of airing it. Just yeah. like, oh, it might be a possibility. Maybe. Of maybe, course. maybe. Um, and then talks. Yeah. I shut the talks down immediately. <laughs> sure. We ain't got nothing to talk about. There's nothing yeah, to talk what, about. Why are we talking? We, ain't what got we, talking? Talking? Who's we talking? finished the conversation. I'm not. Mm -mm. We ain't got nothing Back to talk about. Back in 2021. Oh uh, it ain't nothing to talk about. God is amazing. It ain't nothing to talk about. <laughs> God is that God is you. amazing. God bless you. Amen. God bless amazing. you. Absolutely. God and that's how amazing. I love it. God bless you. Absolutely. And and I'm blessed enough to be in a position where I will fight again, but I'm going to fight on my own terms. Absolutely. Good. I'm going to fight when I want to Paul, and how I want to. Ooh. I'm going to do what I want to and how I want to. And it feels so amazing to be able to say that. <sighs> Listen. It feels so fulfilling to be able to say that. Ain't the best thing ever to be like, nah. Yeah. You don't even have to have a reason. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, freedom. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want no. to. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I don't have no. nothing else. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, want to yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah. even have nothing else to do. But two million no. dollars. No. 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 Nah. Nah. no. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that. I, no, so you. I fought in September of 2022. Two. I still can't. Around the corner. I, I saw September. the pictures. He's still in shape. Yeah, yeah, I'm you dog understand if I ain't as much. Yeah, 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 I'm a dog shit. I still got a six pack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I He's still got a six pack. Got a pack right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, He's got yeah. an extra one. Yeah, too. I'm still. I'm not as ripped up as I I, I will be when I get back in camp. Yeah, because uh, I'm enjoying myself for the first time in my life. As you should. Actually eating. Uh, you don't got. You don't got to worry about cutting thirty pounds in three weeks facts, anymore. Fact. If I fight again, it's gonna be at a higher level. Oh, I'm gonna fight at my catch. Now we fight at my catch. Yeah, 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 yeah. You cut thirty pounds. I'm gonna fight at the weight that I want to cut. No more. I used to fight at. So I started at 125, then I fought at 135, and my last fight was at 145. So I've like bounced around weight class because I've gradually gotten bigger too. Yeah, naturally. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm big as hell right now. Oh. Yeah, I'm huh? big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hey, big as hell. Oh. Andrew Kevin, yeah. you're like, yo. Oh. You, huh? He still hasn't gotten yeah, to my I'm fighting big. class weight, okay? Yeah, Let me just tell you, he ain't nowhere near. You going to not yeah. cut. You go at the bill. This, this is the biggest I've ever been in my life, for sure. Uh, but again, I'm still ripped up. That's the crazy part. I know. I still, I got saw. The, I still have an athlete body. That's yeah, crazy. I still have an athlete body. That's so crazy. He's, it's nuts, he's bro. Still it's all in my legs. Two of him. It's all in my legs. Angel. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I've always been a small person. Like I've always been Lord, very small. I've always been big. Yeah, I've always been very small. Been right there, I was the girl in the tree, weighing the branch down. They gonna kill you, Keith. <laughs> they gonna kill you. Listen, I, I was thinking the other day, Angel. I was not the one running. I thought I was thin, right? I was chunky. Then I had a growth spurt. Then they oh, come back bro. up. I said, "Oh, that was just a little part of your life." Oh yeah. That chunky said, "Listen, you are gonna have some about." <laughs> 13 to about 18. For We're going to be real. right back at 19. It was Bellator. Was we'll real. be back. Yeah, 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 for real. Nah, that ain't it. I lied to fun. myself. <laughs> Tim said it's the biggest he ever been. Yeah, it's the biggest I've ever been in my life. Ooh, I, I ain't even going to throw no numbers out, but I'm big right now. Compare it in comparison. <laughs> comparison. In yeah. compar yeah. comparison to what uh, I used to be. Listen. Yeah. I want y'all to know that when Keith gets nominated for NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Social Media... I'm going to be so mad if I'm in that same don't, year. Don't, I'm going to cuss out them out. Whoever else is in that year... I'm going to be mad. It's over for y'all. Yeah. You're like, done. Just don't, just don't even go to the dinner. Just give him the award. Don't go to Let the dinner. nomination be your victory because it's hilarious. over with. You don't stand a chance. chance. They don't. They shouldn't even let people vote that year. Hey, yeah, I got imposter syndrome. syndrome. I got imposter Keith, syndrome. That don't, Keith, that don't sound, tell you. That don't, don't, don't sound matter. logical. Logical to me. You got. Keith, you got ten it's... million people believing you're you're that guy. Then <laughs> it's happening next year for him, and I'm like, 
They better Speaking in existence. They better not. Oh, no, it's existence. definitely happening next year for you. And I do feel bad for anybody that, <laughs> is, you know, who has also worked hard that is yeah. on that same roster. Yeah, I'll be like, let's just give them a participation ribbon. <laughs> 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 Don't, let's give them something. Yeah, I do have, have really big things coming up, and I'm, I'm blessed, bro. Whoa, we, yeah, we I'm can't blessed beyond wait. Imagine. Yeah, Listen, yeah. Beyond imagine. if you're not one of the 10 million people following Keith on TikTok, mm. Please follow them. Keith, what, hey, what would you like to say as we, yes. we close up? Uh, How would I just want to thank y'all uh, from the bottom of my heart. Aww. This thank has been, us. This has been one of the funnest things I've done in a long time. Aww, Keith. Yeah, Keith yeah, is yeah, just yeah. our little brother. Right, that's, yes. I'm dead serious. To beat up people for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Yes. From the I bottom bet you, Keith ain't, uh, you can't walk <laughs> Keith. <laughs> now, I'm going to sit down. But no, yeah, thank I you. never thought that I would have a um, position to be able to speak. Tell a story. I never thought that would be a story. Mm -hmm. um, I thought somebody else would be telling that story for me because I didn't. I didn't think I would be here. Mm. Um, well, it's I dope, Keith. Is this is still me. part one of your story? Oh, I agree. We're I agree. so early in your Wikipedia. We're still in early life. I don't even have a Wikipedia yet. Yeah, yeah. Wikipedia, 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 yeah. What are y'all doing at Wikipedia? Y'all yeah. be crying yeah. on everything yeah. else. Anybody yeah. making some more keys? Your story, <laughs> yeah. where it can go, I'm almost just genuinely curious mm -hmm. because of what's happened in such a short amount of time. But that's why I'm thanking y'all. I've never told this story before. Oh. No, Thank everybody you for has only known me as, as Keith the Food Critic. I the food reviewer. These like, were some of the funniest, most interesting it stories. Was I've best. always just been the food reviewer. At first, I was Kevin Lee's little brother. Then I was Keith Lee that worked at fucking as a lifeguard. Mm -hmm. Then I was a food reviewer or the guy who did Ronnie's pregnancy cravings. Mm -hmm. uh, now people will know me as Keith Lee. You I'm definitely have Kevin's little brother Listen, no more. Yeah. You now Kevin grateful. is, yeah, is yeah, Keith yeah. Lee's older yeah. brother. <laughs> this Keith Lee. <laughs> mm, mm. Man Keith of God. Lee, yeah. Man of God, man of integrity. Shout mm -hmm. out to y'all. I'm forever, I'm I'm forever grateful. We are yeah, forever, forever grateful. grateful. You yes, have taught yeah. us a lot. You have you have been amazing. Me and Angel did our very best to not overtake your stories. No, I and I think it. we I didn't because Absolutely. we were so genuinely interested Absolutely. in very. I was Absolutely. like, oh my god, yeah, this is she one of the funniest things I've done. <laughs> I, I gotta pause the show. Right, that's when you got Liz. Come downstairs. The girl had a boyfriend. <laughs> the the homeboy <laughs> wasn't a homie. He, she had she body. Had body. You gotta watch this. Let me start it over. <laughs> so this when he the fireworks he says, body. hypnotic. No, they real. was drinking hypnotic. Hypnot that's, when he found, that's when he found out. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm forever thankful, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm forever in debt to y'all. For yes. real. No, thank real. you. We are oh, so glad that you real. trusted now, us. And I will to tell y'all from the bottom of my heart, no matter where this journey goes, y'all always y'all always have my number. Always. Well, I'm the only one that got it. I'm not gonna share yeah, it with Angel Josh. I'm gonna protect it. Yeah. I mean, I'm at the point where I got an agent now, so you Good. might have to go through her. We, but, we'll go through the but agent. You got, okay, if you we'll got go through the agent. <laughs> yeah. We'll go through the agent. Yeah. We'll go through the agent. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, so. this has been the Keith Lee full interview. God, one of the amazing. best interviews I've ever been a part Absolutely. of of all the people I've interviewed. That means the world. This, this has been one the of the, the top three wow. yeah. easily. Wow. wow. I am wow. I'm fully invested. Wow. Top three we're, is crazy. We're so excited for you. I don't know who you think is one. I don't know anything. I don't know. That's this crazy. probably is the best. Yes. What are you talking about? Part one was number two. You have a two, huge discovery. Two. Discography. How the fuck do you say that word? What you Discography. 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 You have say that a word huge resume. Nah, Keith. I'm going to tell you to why, To put me though. on the top is crazy. Because your an story is so good. I didn't know. Mm. Usually mm. when we do mm. interviews like this, we have a producer who does it and I be finding right, out stuff. Right, 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 me and Angel, right, right, I was like, what do you want to do? She was like, let's just ask some questions. I was like, okay. So and my I told you I went to start the beginning, beginning of TikTok, and yeah. so I would have never known. Never fire. known so being kicked out That's of six fire. schools and can't go to no public schools. And That's piss fire. It. I love that. I love every piss it. <laughs> I love every the day. Indiana. I don't even know which one's my favorite story. <laughs> oh, awesome. The soup water. <laughs> it's just guys. It's just the soup water. Fire. That man done quit every That's job. Nah. I, I'm just staring at myself and just relishing at the moment. Oh, this I'm is just great. Soaking it up. Yeah, yeah, I was just soaking it up. This is great. Well, yeah, thank y'all. Yeah. Shout out to you, Absolutely. Patreon. Shout out to you guys. Yes. I appreciate y'all because we they watching this at 1120. Yeah, it's like. On the, on the <laughs> Pacific. Our local time. Like, local time. So it's right. two, before, two before I asked, where's the furthest people have been? Some people were watching in London. Jesus. London? Yeah. I don't know if they're still, still awake in it. They, but they, they, they got up Shout out Keith. to y'all. I mean, y'all, y'all have been. It's two. Most of our people are crazy. Eastern Standard Time or Central. When this going up, Kevin? As soon as Josh get it to me. So make sure you also, while you didn't got here to two minutes and thirty, uh, two hours and two thirty hours. minutes, 
Take your tail on over to NAACP, Mm. okay, and vote for my brother, Kevin. Or just join the Patreon for one month. (laughs) That's appreciation. Oh, that's why you said that. You yeah. got awarded for NCAA. No, no, he, he's no, lost I'm, twice. I still lost twice. So this the Bellas would have cut him. <laughs> this they would have cut him. So he's on his third one. And, we'll and if I don't get it, when y'all call back, I will be on the same time that he was on. Kiss I don't recognize ass. acronyms. Kiss my ass. <laughs> But Patreon, thanks, crew. I really appreciate y'all, man. Uh, yeah. And everybody else, if you can't afford it, I get that, too. But the people That's who give... That's why the vote is free, too. Yeah, voting That's is fire. free. But the people who give, y'all allow us these opportunities. Even though Keith didn't take nothing, we try to fly him. We try to put him up. We try to give him a driver. He said, no. Mm-hmm. I drive I my, my own, own self. Yeah. Running his own car in the world. Car. But mm-hmm. I really appreciate y'all because without y'all, we, I don't even know where we would be. Mm-hmm. Shout out to you, Keith Lee. I mean, Shout out just, we just this wish the best Shout for you God. as you go. God, is God bless y'all. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you. Bye. There's another thing for you. There's another one. There's another thing for you. There's another one. There's another thing for Here's another banger for you. Here's another banger for you. With my boy Kev on stage. And that chick angel.